Baik, kita bisa mulai acaranya. Selamat siang, Bapak dan Ibu. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will start the international webinar shortly. Please turn off your microphone and turn on your video. Mohon untuk para peserta dan partisipan untuk boleh mematikan mikrofonnya atau mute dan menyalakan video langsung. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In a moment, we will start our webinar. Please turn off your microphone, and you are only able to unmute your microphone during question and answer session, if there is question to ask. The question and answer session will be open after all speakers finish off the presentation. Please prepare your, your question and write it in the chat box. Para hadirin yang terhormat, Silahkan mematikan mikrofon Anda selama acara webinar ini. Sesi tanya-jawab akan dilakukan di akhir acara setelah semua pembicara menyelesaikan presentasinya. Jadi para hadirin, para partisipan sekalian, silahkan untuk menyiapkan pertanyaan Anda dan nanti menulisnya di kolom chat. Silahkan ditujukan dengan format untuk pembicara siapa, lalu langsung pertanyaannya. Juga jika diizinkan oleh moderator nanti dapat juga langsung bertanya pada sesi tersebut. Silakan Bapak Ibu menyalakan kamera selama webinar ini berlangsung. Terima kasih. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Stikas Awabros Indonesia, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research India, and Damain Institute of Technology Malaysia, We would like to warmly welcome you to the international webinar about innovation and technology in healthcare. Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, atas nama Stikas Awabros Indonesia, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research dari India, dan Dama Institute of Technology dari Malaysia, Kami menyambut dengan hangat saudara-saudara dalam International Webinar about Innovation of Artificial Intelligence in Medical Healthcare. We would like to welcome the honorable guests, the head of Stikas Awabros Batam dan segenap civitas akademika, kepala ketua dari Stikas Awabros Batam, Profesor Fadil Unzil, PhD SPGK, serta segenap civitas akademika. And the head of Stikas Awabros Pekanbaru, Dr. DRA Wiwi Suryan Dartiwi MM. Selamat siang, Bu. Dan segenap sivitas akademika. And the director of CIE UPS International, Mr. Ravi Makija MBA. And also the representative from Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research from India. And then the representative from Dhamma Institute of Technology, Malaysia. And also welcome to all speakers and participants of this international webinar 2021. Juga selamat datang untuk para pembicara dan para peserta yang berbahagia di siang hari ini di international webinar yang kita adakan di tahun 2021 ini. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to sing Indonesia Malaysia and India National Anthem. Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, dipersilakan untuk bangkit berdiri untuk kita sama-sama menyanyikan lagu kebangsaan Indonesia, Malaysia dan Indonesia.
जनगणमन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाधा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, kami persilakan untuk duduk. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. This international webinar brings together academia, researchers, practitioners, and healthcare students from Stikas Awabros Pekanbaru and Stikas Awabros Batam, Indonesia, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research India, and Dhamma Institute of Technology Malaysia. This webinar is providing a great opportunity for the speakers to share their recent theoretical knowledge, research, and experience in dealing with information of technology and healthcare. Dalam international webinar ini membawa kita semua sebagai akademisi, para peneliti, para praktisi, dan juga tidak tertutup kemungkinan untuk para mahasiswa yang ikut bergabung untuk mempelajari dari tiga institusi. Stikas Awabros, maaf, maksud saya empat institusi. Stikas Awabros Pekanbaru dan Batam dari Indonesia, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research India, dan Dhamma Institute of Technology Malaysia. Dalam webinar ini, dipersiapkan suatu kesempatan yang luar biasa untuk para pembicara untuk membagikan mengenai teori-teori yang terbaru dan penelitian-penelitian terbaru mengenai teknologi dan healthcare atau teknologi dan kesehatan. Dear honorable guests and participants, we are now going to listen to the welcoming remarks which will be delivered by the head of Stikas Awabros Pekanbaru. Para Bapak Ibu peserta sekalian, sekarang kita akan mendengarkan tentang kata-kata pembukaan dari Kepala Ketua Stikas Awabros Pekanbaru. To all participants, please welcome Dr. DRA Wiwi Suryan dan Dartiwi MM. Kepada Ibu Wiwi, kami persilakan. Thank you, Siska. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang, salam sejahtera, dan salam sehat untuk kita semua. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Peace and healthy for all of us. The Honorable 
Profesor Fadil Unsin, Head Stickers Awal Beres Batam. Uh, Profesor Raju, Raju Provos, from Sri Ramachandra Faculty of Engineering and Technology India. And then Dr. John Davis Akara, from Sri Ramachandra Faculty of Engineering and Technology India. And Mr. Sapuan Awang, MSG, from Dame Institute Technology Malaysia. And then my best friend, Mr. Rafi. Hello, Mr. Rafi, from PIE UPS International India. How are you, Mr. Rafi? I hope you always healthy. <laughs> okay. And all of lecture from Indonesia, India, Malaysia, and other country. And then all of college students from various countries. Terima kasih kami haturkan telah bergabung di webinar internasional yang kali ini mengambil tema The Rule of Artificial Intelligence and Medical and Healthcare Service. Uh, the gratitude for all participants who have joined this international webinar which have a theme, The Rule of Artificial Intelligence in Medical and Healthcare Service. Jadi tema ini diambil karena perkembangan teknologi yang sangat cepat, tidak terbendung, sehingga sistem informasi pun sekarang telah menjadi acuan dalam segala bidang, termasuk juga ke sektor layanan kesehatan. This, ten, this international webinar is provided as the implementation of the MOU uh, between Stikas Awal Berus Pekan Baru, Stikas Awal Berus uh, Batam, and Private College of India and Malaysia. We are previously in 2019, my friend and I from some private college in Indonesia that joined the HPTKS, Himpunan Perguruan Tinggi Kesehatan Indonesia. Uh, Eva been visited and held this seminar in some college in India, and we visited to Bangalore, Bangalore, and New Delhi, of course. Also visited to Taj Mahal, that is uh, very beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Rafi, has accompanied us to see one of the miracle of the world, uh, Taj Mahal in oh, India. Yeah, very amazing. <laughs> And then in February 2020, when the world has been started with the COVID, uh, COVID virus, we still have a chance to visit some uh, colleges in Malaysia to be able to collaborate in many things like uh, research, public service, and publication. But everything still can uh, not be implemented uh, because there is a pandemic throughout the world. And Webinar uh, and the webinar is prepared as the beginning step uh, of our cooperative to improve education in India, uh, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Jadi webinar ini terselenggara sebagai langkah awal kerjasama kita untuk memajukan pendidikan di Indonesia, uh, baik untuk pendidikan, penelitian, dan pengabdian masyarakat yang kita berharap bisa berkolaborasi dengan Indonesia, India, dan Malaysia. Semoga kolaborasi ini bermanfaat uh, untuk semua uh, untuk semua institusi yang uh, berkolaborasi. Hopefully this collaboration is beneficial to all of us. Uh, demikian yang bisa kami sampaikan uh, so that I can convey and the time back to MC. Thank you Siska. Baik, terima kasih Bu Wiwi untuk kata-kata sambutan pembukanya. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Wiwi, for the welcoming remarks. And next, the opening remarks will be delivered by the head of Stikas Awa Bros Batam. Kata sambutan yang berikutnya kami serahkan kepada Ketua Stikas Awa Bros Batam. To all participants, please welcome Profesor Fadil Unsil, Unsil PhD, SPGK. Silahkan, Prof. Fadil. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good, good afternoon. Yes, I as Ketua or the head of TKS Alor Batam would like to welcome the speakers for our international webinar entitled Innovation of Artificial Intelligence in Medical Healthcare. I will also welcome all the participants of the webinar. I hope this webinar will run successfully and all, all participants will join until 
the end of the session. This call, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you, Prof. Adil Unzil. Terima kasih, Profesor Fadil, untuk kata sambutannya. Thank you, Prof. Fadil. And next, we will listen to the opening remarks, which will be delivered by the representative from Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research, India. Please welcome Profesor Raju Provost. Good afternoon. On behalf of Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Educational Research and all of us here in India, I hope you can see the screen. So we are not able to see your screen, sir. Uh, one second. Are you able to see, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of all of us here in India, we are sending greetings and best wishes to all of the participants of the Indonesia, Malaysia, and India International Webinar. We're very happy to have this program with more than 300 participants at this time. On behalf of the institutions in India and the students and faculty here, we're looking forward to working with you. This is the beginning. And we're very happy that uh, all of you took the initiative to make this possible. With us today from Sri Ramachandra, Dr. John Davis Akara, who will deliver the artificial intelligence applications in medical health care. And we are also looking for other participants making their presentations, we hope, in the future, not in too distant future, all of you would have a chance to come to India in person and participate in a program like this. Once again, thanks to all of you for the invitation and joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Raju, for the remarks. Terima kasih, Professor Raju. Now, we will continue to the main session by the speakers that will be led by Mr. Ravi Mahija, MBA as moderator. I will briefly introduce Mr. Ravi. Mr. Ravi Mahija, MBA, is the director of TIE UPS International, promoter of India, Indonesia Educational Links, who has worked in the Indonesian education sector for over 15 years. TIE UPS is an organization of young and internationally experienced professionals who are passionate and committed to education. And all activities are related to the field of education internationally. One of the mission is to enhance collaborative education links between in institutions between India and Asia, including Indonesia. Jadi para peserta yang terhormat, Bapak Rafi ini sudah lebih dari 15 tahun bekerja sama dengan uh, Indonesia dan sudah mahir sekali berbahasa Indonesia rupanya Pak Rafi ya. Jadi untuk uh, lebih lanjut nanti soal pendidikan atau apapun yang Bapak Ibu ingin ketahui terutama mengenai uh, kolaborasi pendidikan bisa nanti menghubungi Mr. Rafi ya setelah ini. Oke, okay, to Mr. Rafi, the time is yours now. Silakan Mr. Rafi. Ya, yeah. thank you so much Ibu Suska. Um yeah, selamat siang, namaste, a very good afternoon to all of you all. Uh, first of all, uh, terima kasih banyak, uh, Ibu Vivi, uh, for your wonderful friendship, for your trust, and also for the support in enhancing uh, India-Indonesia education links. Uh, webinar ini adalah, it's a continuation yeah, of the MOU yang kita di tanda tangan, and we hope, uh, we look forward for much more uh, collaborations. So once again, uh, thank you, Bu. Thanks once again, Bu, for this opportunity to be a moderator for this wonderful uh, event, uh, an international webinar on the topic uh, on the topic innovation of artificial intelligence, medical healthcare. 
So once again, to all our wonderful speakers and also to our wonderful uh, uh, audiences. Jadi karna kita the audiences, we also have uh, lecturers, uh, we have teachers, we also have uh, uh, students. So maybe saya panggil semuanya bapa ibu dan teman teman juga ya. Jadi panggil semuanya. Okay, so today's uh, uh, bapa ibu teman teman kita kan ada topiknya. Like today's the uh, the topic of the webinar today is innovation of artificial intelligence medical healthcare. Uh, Bapa ibu teman teman ini topik na adalah luar biasa and we have wonderful speakers today. Uh, we have uh, pertama the first speaker we actually have uh, Pa Tengku Mohammad uh, Yoshandi. Uh, he's a committed uh, lecturer with three years of experience at Stikus Awal Bros Pekanbaru, uh, teaching radio biology, uh, radiation protection, OSHA, radiation physics, nuclear medicine, and basic computer. Uh, Patenku has completed his Bachelor of Science Honours from University Kebangsaan Malaysia and also um, from the same institution he has completed his Master of Science uh, specializing in radiation and uh, nuclear safety. Bapak Ibu teman-teman with Bapak, ada pertanyaan, ya silakan di. Uh, yeah, can you all hear me, Bapak Ibu? Can you all, am I audible? Yeah, okay. Yeah, jadi Bapak Ibu, teman-teman, kalau ada pertanyaan, ya silakan tolong dicatat ya. Just keep it, uh, just take note of it. Semua pertanyaan dari Bapak Ibu, teman-teman, kita nanti dijawabkan di sesi terakhir sesuai udah di uh, udah dibagi informasi dari Ibu Siska. Right, so may I now request uh, Patenku to please take over the screen. Patenku, the screen is yours. Okay, Mr. Rafi, thank you very much for your introductions. I'm actually uh, I'm not that kind of expert to talk about uh, artificial intelligence, so, but I will try my best to give you uh, some explanations about artificial intelligence. Okay, uh, I will share my screen right now. Okay, uh, maybe you can see my screen now. Yeah. Okay, I will talk about uh, artificial intelligence it's, and its potential in medical imaging. So uh, this is a title that I came up uh, with our international webinar uh, about innovations of artificial intelligence in medical healthcare. Uh, before I like to continue with our subject, I'd like to introduce myself, but it's already been introduced by Mr. Mr. Rafi and his very great introductions and maybe I just can uh, skip it. Uh, I will talk about my institution first, uh, the, the place where I, where I work, uh, the profile of Stikes Albers Pekanbaru. My institute name is Stikes Albers Pekanbaru, or in English, it's College of Health Science of our Bros Pekanbaru. Uh, the location we just moved to Jalan Karya Simpang BPG, or, Sim, or BPG Junction, T Junction, Pekanbaru, Riau, Indonesia, with the code post number is 2828. Uh, we have only two courses in our institution. We have Diploma of Radiology or uh, Medical Imaging and Bachelor Program 2 uh, for Hospital Management. Uh, in Indonesia, we call it as Administrasi Rumah Sakit. We have uh, our website is stickersourbrospekanbaru.ac.id. You could check out our website if you're interested uh, in our institution uh, to have no more about our institution. Okay, then I move to the next. Okay, uh, my, my institution is established in 2017, uh, registered under Kemen Ristek Dikpi, is Indonesia's Minister of Higher Education with registration number 245, uh, 245 KPTI 20, 2017. The purpose is to conduct three Dharma Perguruan Tinggi or Education Research and Public Services. 
uh, this is this is the vision of my institution is to become the organizer of health science education with excellence and reliable for producing the competent and professional health worker in its field at national level on global oriented at 2036 and this is our mission uh, the first mission is to organize the excellence and professional education research and public service in health science to able to compete in national level and global oriented and as we move to global now uh, so that's why we, we create this uh, we host this international webinar and then uh, the second the produce the competent alumni alumni in health science perform the effective innovative the independent and service oriented management perform the collaboration with local and overseas institution to conduct the three dharma perguruan tinggi education research and public service and also to upgrade the human resource competences and the prosperity of its society and this is our motto. Our motto is uh, spirit, spirit of caring, vision of excellence. And then the other one, we have this, we have this picture about uh, the first and only because our courses, it's the first one in our province and the only one to our province. So we have a diploma course of radiology, uh, uh, the courses. The courses of radiology uh, or medical imaging, which is available in Ria province, in Indonesia only offered by stickers of Pekanbaru. High demand of radiographer give a huge advantage to the courses for supplying the market with support product. Then also the alumni is expected to be excellent and competent, competent in medical imaging field. And bachelor program of hospital management uh, is one and only also is one and only in Rio province, even in Sumatra. High number of healthcare demands in Indonesia will causing the increase of hospital appearance, and it also will add the high number of hospital management worker for managing the hospital industries. The program small competition will give a high benefit to the for the alumni to compete in Sumatra's market job. Okay, then I will move to our subject. Maybe you, maybe you have already. I've been I've been already introduced you uh, to my or to my institution. Then I will give you the subject now. Uh, what is artificial intelligence? But artificial intelligence is just like a code. It's just like a, it's just like a code. Uh, is it consists of many algorithms and it's been uh, it's been uh, it's been th this many algorithm is is used. And it's, a, it's like a disruptive technology using algorithm to process the complex data. So it's a device, it's an algorithm, it's a code that can, that the, the planning is to, co is to construct how to mimic the cognitive function such as learning and problem solving. Jadi artificial intelligence ini adalah sebuah teknologi yang paling baru, teknologi terbaru yang menggunakan algoritma, yang menggunakan coding dalam proses, untuk memproses data-data yang kompleks. Jadi data atau kompleks itu uh, banyak data, data itu uh, bisa dalam bentuk data pixel, bisa dalam bentuk data voxel dan sebagainya. Dan kemudian uh, ada merupakan device yang digunakan untuk menyerupai uh, fungsi kognitif dari suatu dari seorang manusia. Apa itu fungsi kognitif dari manusia? Yaitu adalah uh, seperti belajar ataupun uh, seba, seperti uh, kognitif fungsi kognitif untuk menyelesaikan masalah. Uh, jadi uh, artificial intelligence is just like how to build a new mind for the computer. So AI in business and company was first born from the project called the Moonshot from the MD Anderson Cancer Center to help diagnose and recommend treatment plans for certain kind of cancer. Three types of AI process. One, one process is for automation and the other one is cognitive insight and the other one is, and the last one is the cognitive engagement. Jadi ada tiga jenis tipe AI yang biasa digunakan di dalam dunia bisnis, dalam dunia sehari-hari. Yang pertama yaitu automation, proses automation, uh, dan ke, kemudian cognitive insight, dan yang ketiga adalah cognitive engagement. Nah, ini adalah uh, proses automation. Process automation is the most common AI of doing the digital and physical tasks, typically back office and financial activity. Jadi merupakan suatu AI ataupun uh, bedel untuk robot yang mampu mengerjakan kegiatan yang uh, kegiatan yang dilakukan oleh orang-orang di back office. It's doing for financial activity to doing some administration and also um, like updating the record of a customer, uh, like updating the record of the customer. Uh, when you are when you when you calling the, the customer service and then this ai is could 
automatically update the record of your customer. So you don't need to type it manually. It's actually been recorded by AI. So it's actually replacing a human. So using robot or cloud and cloud behaving like a human inputting and customer information from multiple IT system, include transferring data from email to into system of record, for example, updating customer files. And second one is replacing lost credit card or ATM reaching to multiple system. Jadi, uh, dia namanya seperti namanya itu adalah RPA, Robot, robot Processing Automation, uh, menggunakan robot untuk mentransfer data dari email yang kemudian akan direcord untuk mengupdate uh, untuk mengupdate data-data pelanggan dan kemudian ada lagi untuk proses automation yaitu uh, untuk menggantikan uh, kredit kartu kredit Anda yang hilang dan yang yang sakit yang akhirnya mampu untuk meraih ataupun uh, menjangkau berbagai macam sistem. Jadi itu adalah fungsi salah satu fungsi dari AI atau uh, disebut juga dengan uh, process automation. The system the system is actually the least smart because it doesn't learn to improve. Jadi uh, sistem dari proses automation ini itu yang paling kurang cerdas karena uh, dia tidak di, dirancang untuk uh, untuk belajar untuk dapat meningkatkan dirinya sendiri seperti itu. Oke, okay. this is a cognitive insight. A cognitive insight using algorithm to detect pattern in fast volume of data and interpret their meaning. Uh, so it's using algorithm to process the data and and after that they they use the data to do some work. This is a machine learning tool used to predict many inquiry, mostly, for example, particular customer likely to buy, identify credit fraud in real time and detect insurance claim fraud. And, and the third one is to automate, uh, to automate personal, personalized targeting of digital ads. Jadi um, ini adalah suatu mesin yang dapat digunakan untuk memprediksi, memprediksi uh, banyak hal. Dan salah satunya yaitu adalah uh, apa yang akan kamu beli pada saat pada saat uh, kamu melihat suatu iklan atau mencari dalam mencari suatu di dalam uh, beranda cari kamu kemudian uh, bisa juga untuk mengetahui uh, mengidentifikasi adanya uh, credit card credit card yang palsu atau penipuan kredit credit card ataupun uh, mendeteksi insurance claim fraud claims fraud atau klaim uh, uh, asuransi palsu jadi uh, this is a machine is trained is some part of data set and could get better it the ability to use new data set to make an accurate prediction. Jadi semakin banyak data, maka semakin banyaklah um, dat, semakin banyak data maka semakin akurat prediksi dari uh, dari dari AI tersebut dari cognitive insight ini. Fungsi macam dari dari cognitive insight ini. Uh, then we have a cognitive engagement. Machine learn to engage using natural language to human. So it's just like uh, when you are looking for a website looking for a website and then you want to ask someone but there is a, there's a at the left corner at the left bottom corner of a website you you, you can find there's a chatbot so there's a chatbot you chat with it with, with with someone on the other side but it's not actually someone it's a machine it's a it's a bot so it's actually a chatbot so chatbot is just like is we call it as an ai but it has a function of cognitive engagement. Cognitive engagement is to uh, the cognitive engagement is to engage with human. Is to using the natural language of human, and then and then you could you could interact with with the robot. So that is the cognitive engagement. So this is the least the least AI that been used in a in a business because uh, they, we have a customer service, we have a human in it, and because and also it is a very complex one. Uh, so the cognitive engagement is used mostly in 24/7 customer service, a chat chatbot, health treatment recommendation system that help provide a great customer care plan that take into account individual patients, health status, and previous treatment. So you should just ask the robot uh, what are the previous treatment or maybe the health status of the of the patients, and the robot give the recommendation of the health treatment to you. So it is like an algorithm to 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 make you a personal a personalized recommendation system for the for your healthcare
Jadi uh, cognitive engagement ini adalah suatu uh, fungsi ataupun suatu tipe dari AI yang bertujuan untuk dapat berbicara ataupun dapat langsung berinteraksi dengan manusia. Dan salah satu contohnya itu adalah 24/7 customer service ataupun uh, 24 jam 7 hari untuk customer service uh, chatbot dan juga uh, health treatment ataupun suatu robot yang di, dirancang khusus uh, untuk uh, yang dirancang khusus untuk memberikan rekomendasi uh, treatment kepada pasien dengan meletakkan ataupun dengan memberikan uh, individual patient health status dan juga uh, previous treatment-nya. Seperti. Usage of artificial intelligence in daily life uh, yeah. untuk apa aja sih yang kita, yang biasa artificial intelligence yang dimanfaatkan di dalam kehidupan sehari-hari in daily life. And the first one is of course the chatbot. So when you are going to website and you wanted to know or maybe you wanted to know more and you you wanted some you wanted to ask someone and you can ask the chatbot but it's not many chatbot in in many website and of course for advertisement uh, untuk advertisement jadi untuk advertisement biasanya digunakan oleh oleh seorang entrepreneur ataupun oleh seorang wirausaha yang berfungsi untuk memperiklankan uh, barang-barangnya dan produk-produknya sehingga mampu uh, memberikan rekomendasi untuk calon-calon pembeli ataupun untuk calon-calon customer. Uh, it's an advert- for the advertisement usage artificial intelligence is used to artificial intelligence is used to make their product for the entrepreneur. The, the product is is to be recommended by the to the next or to the potential customer or to the potential buyer. And then there is a usage in the agriculture. Agriculture issues uh, to predict weather, so then you, you should know uh, the right time to the right time to choose to plant some uh, some crops. Uh, jadi uh, di, untuk agriculture AI digunakan untuk memprediksi uh, ca, apa memprediksi memprediksi ini memprediksi weather untuk kita mengetahui uh, cuaca untuk dapat memprediksi cuaca sehingga kita tahu. kapan-kapan saja waktu yang cocok untuk dapat menanam tanaman di dalam uh, kebun kita atau di desa kita. Kemudian untuk government itu artificial intelligence itu digunakan untuk mendeteksi adanya tax avoidance ataupun mendeteksi adanya uh, pem, uh, penghindaran pajak. So uh, in government is usually used to track down the tax evasion for the for the entrepreneur. Okay, and can artificial intelligence implemented in medical imaging? Okay, AI or artificial intelligence is like an algorithm which mimicking the cognitive function of human. Using AI can easily apply in medical imaging from image from in image processing and interpretation. Jadi um, dalam untuk kita menggunakan AI itu dapat sangat mudah kita gunakan dalam medical imaging dari proses memproses image dan juga untuk menginterpretasi image multi multi application from image acquisition and processing edit reporting follow up planning data storage data data mining and others so, jadi banyak sekali uh, penggunaan penggunaan yang yang dari uh, dari dari akuisisi image ataupun pendapatan image melakukan processing image dan kemudian uh, edit reporting ada follow up planning uh, kemudian dan data storage dan data mining rasoras penyimpanan data data mining adalah untuk pengambilan data atau penyimpanan data AI in medical imaging uh, jadi ada uh, there is two there is two kind of algorithm that been used or two system that been used in medical imaging already it's uh, the first one is a machine learning and the other one is deep learning So, uh, in machine learning, is an incorporate computational model and algorithm that imitate the architecture of the biological neural network in the brain, or ANN. ML network or machine learning network is uh, architecture make them prone to fail in reaching the convergence and overfit training data set. So, if they image uh, data and they prone to fail to predict or to reaching uh, the convergence of the data. Uh, jadi, uh, machine learning ini. adalah uh, salah satu sistem yang ada di, di medical imaging sebelum adanya AI dan ini pertama kali digunakan dalam dalam medical imaging ataupun dalam radiologi adalah merupakan satu kombinasi model yang menggunakan algoritma 
algoritma yang digunakan untuk mengimitasi uh, seperti uh, seperti bentuk uh, otak manusia. Dan kemudian ML et al. machine learning ini mempunyai satu arsitektur network yang dapat gagal jika terlalu banyak data yang dia kelola. Kemudian ada deep learning. There is a deep learning. Uh, is the next after machine learning and then there are deep learning. Deep learning is artificial neural network structured in multiple layers to decode imaging raw data. And the L drive because of the recent hardware like GPU. Artificial neural net, uh, jadi uh, deep learning ini adalah merupakan artificial neural networks yang distrukturkan dengan, beber, dengan berbagai bentuk uh, layers untuk mendekode untuk mendecode, mendecode uh, suatu data yang mentah, suatu data gambar yang mentah. Dan kemudian uh, DL ini sekarang um, mulai menja- mulai maju karena adanya uh, hardware yang terbaru yaitu ada GPU yang sudah bagus atau uh, graphic processing unit. Ini adalah bentuk AI. Uh, ini adalah bentuk-bentuk dari sistem yang ada dalam medical imaging pada saat ini. AI is device mimics cognitive function since 1950s and machine learning. Algorithm is, a, is an algorithm that improve as they are exposed to more data. And then deep learning is artificial neural network structured in multiple layers to decode imaging raw data. Uh, it's been uh, since 2020s. Uh, ini adalah gambar ataupun ini adalah struktur apa perbedaan antara classic machine learning dan deep learning. This is uh, it is a diagram And how, what is the difference between classic machine learning and deep learning? Classic machine learning is uh, when you have a multiple image, and then you should go under, you should undergo feature extraction first, and then after that you could have a classification, and then you could have uh, this picture, class one and class two. You could have the detection of the classic machine learning. But in the deep learning, we have the first one. There is no need for feature extraction. Tidak perlu adanya vector ekstraksi, maka dari komputer dengan dia akan langsung uh, keluar vector extraction and classification. It's in one, but there is so many, uh, but it's but there is so many process in it, and after that you could have the class one and class two pictures. Okay. So in the past, computer help the, uh, the producing the medical image, but the new method help in detection and characterization. This will help radiologists with the high number of examination because such technologies help to shorten the time of the frame rate. Uh, so because there is no need to manually to have the feature extraction, it's just, yes, uh, the process is in one process to feature extraction and classification. It's only three process, not, not four process. So it tend to shorten the time for the radiologists to have an examination. So. It's actually help the radiologists. So, so the conclusion is using AI could help to shorten the time, uh, the, the, the shorten, to shorten the time consuming tasks such image segmentation could be automatized while, while better support for detection and integration of finding can be achieved. And also radiologists can focus on communication with patient and interaction with college in multi disciplinary teams. AI could help improving the patient healthcare and satisfaction. Jadi uh, kesimpulannya dari dari semua materi kita tadi, dari materi tadi adalah menggunakan AI kita dapat memendekkan uh, waktu yang yang waktu untuk satu pekerjaan dari seorang radio radio radiologis atau radiografer yang dengan kita dapat menghasilkan uh, image segmentation secara otomatis. Dan kemudian radiologis ataupun dokter radiologi itu dapat fokus untuk melakukan komunikasi kepada pasien dan juga berinteraksi dengan uh, kolega yang kolega dalam uh, tim dengan multidisciplinary tim. Sedangkan AI could help improving the patient healthcare expectation. AI dapat membantu meningkatkan uh, healthcare ataupun pelayanan kesehatan dari pasien dan juga uh, kepuasan dari pasien itu sendiri. Oke, okay. begitu saja. Okay, that's uh, my presentation, Mr. Rafi. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, terima kasih banyak, uh, Patanku, for your uh, wonderful presentation on the topic artificial yes. intelligence in medical imaging. I think uh, semua teman-teman kita, Bapak Ibu, udah tahu sekarang a little bit more about artificial intelligence and use uh, in medical imaging. Jadi prosesnya udah benar-benar udah 
uh, prosesnya udah di shorten ya jadi bisa dapat yang hasilnya bisa lebih cepat so that was pretty informative right and and of course it was nice to know about the cognitive uh, engagement about the cognitive insight dan lain-lainnya thank you so much Pak Tengku terima kasih banyak yeah. jadi teman-teman Bapak Ibu yang ada pertanyaan ya yeah, please keep the questions uh, pasti nanti yang terakhir setelah sesinya at the end of all the three presentations uh, kalau ada pertanyaan untuk Pak Tengku pasti Pak Tengku yang dibantu untuk dijawabkan right so thank you once again terima kasih banyak Pak Tengku for your wonderful presentation you're welcome Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Jadi Bapak Ibu, teman-teman yang uh, yang kita, so let's move on to the second topic for today. The second topic for today is artificial innovation in nuclear medicine. And to deliver this, we have a, a very good renowned speaker, uh, Pak Mohamed Sapuan Awang, uh, with uh, over 15 years of vast teaching and industrial experience in the field of science and other uh, related fields. He has an academic uh, uh, appointments as the head of the department, a program coordinator, a curriculum development advisor, and a senior lecturer with teaching appointments to, for undergraduate programs, mentoring final year uh, student projects, vast clinical and technical experience as industrial advisor, clinical placements, and many more. Bapa Ibu Taman Taman, right? Uh, pa, uh, pa Mohamed Sapuan is currently pursuing his PhD in uh, medical physics, which is nuclear medicine uh, from University Kabangsan, Malaysia. He has completed his Master of Science uh, specializing in radiation and nuclear safety from the same institution. Uh, currently, pa, uh, pa Sapuan is the head of the department or the program medical imaging from the Damai Institute of Technology. Without further delay, may I now request Pa Mohamed Sapuan Awang to take over the screen. Uh, pa Sapuan, the screen is yours. Okay, uh, to check, uh, Kevin, I think that can hear me, right? Yes, Pa, please, sir. Make all right. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ravi, uh, moderator. Thanks a lot for uh, introducing uh, me uh, and about my uh, background. And also, uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Iska uh, for today's session. And uh, I also would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Kesihatan Pekan Baru and uh, for uh, giving me opportunity to share my knowledge, my uh, experience, and also to talk about the artificial intelligence in nuclear medicine, maybe the view of Indonesia experience. And also uh, thanks to uh, Prof, Dr. Mr. Uh, Ms. Weather and everyone. Thank you very much for all. I'm glad to have you all here and thank you for having me also. Okay, I will start uh, first share my screen uh, about my uh, today uh, lecture. Yeah? Okay. You can see my slide. Um, it's still starting by, I think, yeah, now we can see it. Yes, Pa. We can see your screen, Pa. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, and today uh, in our uh, webinar series, uh, which is uh, innovation, of the uh, artificial, artificial intelligence in medical healthcare, and as presented by uh, Mr. Yoshandi. That's now, uh, I think we have uh, actually the idea what is the uh, artificial intelligence all about, and then uh, I think it's about the machine, all right? It's quite interesting. And then uh, my topic, I will try to like bring you what we can implement in the uh, nuclear medicine uh, industry, okay? in the clinical uh, nuclear medicine as well. Because nuclear medicine is just not a machine alone. Nuclear medicine, we have uh, the uh, isotope, uh, radio tracer, uh, the radio pharmaceutical, a part of the uh, molecular uh, imaging. Okay, and then uh, this is the topic given to me, right? Nuclear uh, medicine, uh, Malaysia experience. Okay, uh, overview, this is my topic, which is I will touch uh, first the uh, possible uh, application, right? the possible application of AI uh, 
uh, in the view of the typical workflow in medical imaging. Okay, I'm going to touch the typical uh, workflow uh, in medical imaging and uh, the impact of artificial intelligence on uh, nuclear medicine profession. Okay, because we are talking about the machine. We are talking about artificial intelligence. So, of course, like we have to uh, wonder what's going to happen to our profession and then to the physician, to the uh, specialist. Okay? So, I'm going to touch about that as well, the impact of AI on the uh, nuclear uh, medicine profession and uh, followed by the limitation of AI. All right? Limitation of AI because even though uh, people claim that AI like very intelligent. So the word itself sometimes is like overwhelming. Uh, people know that uh, it's a new innovation, okay? But that is also a limitation of uh, AI. And uh, what is the current state of uh, AI in nuclear uh, medicine, all right? The current state of AI in nuclear medicine and uh, the outlook and uh, the perspective. Okay, that is uh, my overview for uh, my uh, lecture uh, today, okay? Okay, here I would like to share with you about the uh, Malaysia uh, Nuclear Medicine Services uh, in Malaysia. Currently, this is from the uh, Ministry uh, of Health. Huh? Okay, because uh, in the peninsular Malaysia, the northern region, uh, we have uh, in the hospital Pulau Pinang, right? Because we have a uh, nuclear medicine department uh, and then uh, move to the central region, all right? Because uh, we have also uh, hospital called Lumpur, uh, uh, that is also uh, nuclear medicine uh, services. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, the National uh, Cancer uh, Institute. It's located uh, in the Putrajaya, located in Putrajaya. Uh, and uh, the southern region, we also have uh, in uh, Hospital Sultana Amina, uh, Johor Bahru, okay? the service of uh, nuclear uh, medicine uh, department. And move to East Malaysia. Uh, Sarawak, uh, we have Hospital Umum Sarawak and uh, Sabah. Okay, Sabah, the uh, Women and uh, Children uh, Hospital. Okay, it is a source from the uh, MOH uh, that references uh, is at the end of my lecture. So you can uh, see, like, if you want to like know further about this, then you are free to check on the uh, available information. Okay, there are currently uh, regional nuclear manufacturers under the MOH. Okay, so uh, the policy, because we are dealing with the nuclear, all right, we are dealing with the nuclear, and sometimes there are people using uh, words like radiation, okay. Of course, we need a proper regulation, uh, policy, and then I believe uh, once we uh, registered with the uh, regulatory body, uh, regardless of the country, I believe they have uh, their own policy and like even uh, international uh, professional body like uh, IAEA, yeah? okay, we also have that and in Malaysia, we have Ministry of Health and we have the uh, AELB, uh, Atomic Energy Licensing Board. So this is the uh, policy, everything is there. This is free also, available information. You can check this one also, it is a uh, Malaysian uh, experience, operational policy in nuclear medicine uh, services uh, published by the uh, Ministry uh, of Health. Uh, yeah, and then also have the nuclear uh, it's controlled by them. Uh, everything like how we move the radio pharmaceutical, the ice top top, the uh, the radio tracer, the patient to establish a new department to register a new department that is controlled by uh, the uh, regulatory body. Okay, and then uh, I also would like to bring you the idea what is the nuclear medicine uh, services. Basically, I think everyone knows a nuclear med. Uh, the common machine like PET, PET, uh, PET positron uh, machine, and we also have the uh, hybrid machine, PET CT. Uh, we have the PET. Right. So on top of that, we have the nuclear medicine room to prepare all the radio pharmaceutical. Okay. So to set up the room, normally we have the cardiac stress test room. Okay. Cardiac stress test room. We have also the uh, radio pharmaceutical, the administration room. And a hot waiting area or the uh, update room okay, to prepare the process. And then uh, the cyclotron, okay, Malaysia, we have this. Uh, the cyclotron machine, uh, I think we believe uh, I have uh, here in Malaysia in private and also the government uh, hospital. Uh. And then the radionuclide therapy, the nuclear uh, therapy wall.
ward, there is a radioactive isolation room because we are dealing with the radioactive, right? There is a nuclear matter. And then uh, the decay storage room, okay? And uh, a radioactive uh, delay decay tank and radio pharmacy hub lab. This is, I think, I believe this is quite a standard requirement by the uh, regulatory body that should have in the uh, nuclear uh, department, okay? And uh, look at here. Okay, now let's look at uh, how artificial intelligence can be applied uh, in the nuclear map. Okay, and then I would like to bring you again in medical imaging, it's quite standard imaging workflow. We have planning, scanning, reading, and reporting. Okay, when it comes to the uh, uh, specialist, we come to uh, reading and reporting, and then come to the radiographer or radiolo uh, radiologic technologies nuclear medicine technology. So we come to planning, uh, scanning, and then for the test, planning part quite important also, right? So this is typical uh, medical imaging workflow. Okay, I'm going to touch this, uh, how it's possible to apply AI in nuclear, based on these four uh, topics, patient selection, scheduling, uh, research on patient, that is under the plan. Okay, when it comes to scanning, okay, when it comes to scanning, they're looking for faster image acquisition, uh, better image quality, all right? Because we are dealing with the machine again, uh, uh, a machine high end technology. It's not just a uh, just a common machine, all right? It's a high end, high end technology machine. Okay, and then after that, of course, very important in medical. Uh, it does. I mean, like, uh, of course, you need a good data and a good uh, image quality. Okay, and patient safety also come to the uh, top of the what uh, practices. Okay. And then uh, it helps uh, specialists to uh, give a good uh, report. It plays a very like, uh, significant role uh, in producing uh, a better diagnosis uh, to the patient. Okay? And then, okay, now look at the planning. The planning part, how AI can be applied. Okay. Electronic medical record, group by no-show history. That is the, uh, from the past experience. From the past experience, because we have to bear in mind, uh, nuclear med, we are dealing with not just the patient machine alone, but we also have radio tracer. And then we know that radio tracer, they have the half-life. The problem with half-life DK, once you already like uh, the appointment for the patient given, patient no, there's no show of the patient, that be a problem of the hospital. Okay, so they try to apply AI at the planning part. Okay, the electronic medical record at the group by the by no uh, show history. They, they try to uh, apply the data and technical uh, when it comes to the uh, machine. Right? So they try to get the appointment specific factors, social demographic factors, they collect all this data. Okay. So uh, from the, uh, pre, I think this quite recent uh, research, uh, last year, 2019, they published this, uh, the reference uh, at the end of Malaysia. So, they try to have a model, all right? They're a model that has a significant power to predict failure to attend uh, a scheduled radiology examination. Okay, they try to avoid no show of the patient. Okay, patient that uh, have got appointment uh, for a nuclear uh, medicine procedure, right? And it's also uh, not far fetched to have a uh, hypo uh, hypothesis that the prediction of no shows at much higher accuracy could be available soon. Okay, because Artificial is, intelligence is already uh, knocking the door. It's already in, in the market. Okay? The, and then uh, researcher uh, across the world, very active doing uh, good research uh, on the AI uh, topic. Okay? Then uh, it can be also like assumed that in the future, in the future, uh, time consuming manual research uh, by the patient, by the uh, patient information that they gather in the system, the data, like the intelligence, uh, artificial assistance. They call as a intelligent artificial assist, uh, assistance. And uh, it's also uh, presented uh, to the physician. Because in the end, the physician that made the decision uh, in the form of a uh, concise case uh, and they come in the uh, dashboard type. The information that's available in the department already. So they can like predict. That is the idea. They try to predict from the history of the patient. Okay. So, for example, uh, a relatively simple uh, rule that based uh, of the uh, symbolic artificial intelligence uh, that we know that is it could 
uh, automatically check for certain contract indication also even. They can put in the system, then generate by the uh, computer, by the machine. That's why they call it as a machine learning. They call it as a deep learning. That is really artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence does not based on the knowledge or the normal data, right? You must have a, a, a machine learning and come to the uh, deep learning as explained by the previous speaker. Okay, so such like allergy, uh, of course, contract in, uh, indication or to reduce the uh, unnecessary uh, duplication of uh, examination by analyzing the prior experience. That's very good. I mean, uh, for me, in my view, this is uh, really helpful uh, to give a better service uh, to the patient and to the public, of course, right? Because we, we, we have a proper planning before patient come uh, to the hospital with the history of uh, diseases. Okay, that is the planning part. Okay, now, come to the technologies. Come to the technologies for us, scanning. Okay, come to the scanning part, what we have to look at. The scanning part as a technologies, as a radiographer, as a nuclear uh, medicine uh, technology or even medical uh, disease in the department. All right. So uh, in nuclear med, again, um, I think same idea also apply to computer tomography, MRI. All right. So the attenuation map and the scatter correction, we, we try to avoid that. Okay. Remain hot topics for PET and PET CT and SPEC imaging until now. People keep talking about scatter radiation, people are talking about image quality. So when it comes to the scanning, they try to like uh, utilize, they try to use the idea of artificial intelligence. Okay, by Huang et al, they use the uh, modified unit, it's a system uh, that which is uh, a specialized conventional uh, network uh, architecture uh, for the uh, biomedical uh, image, right? They use the segmentation, uh, to uh, generate the attenuation maps for whole body PET MRI. That's the idea. There's a lot. Of course, you can read because if I want to share here everything, there's a lot. Uh, the project is ongoing project uh, across the world about the uh, scanning and planning part of the uh, nuclear map. Okay, they use the activity and uh, the uh, attenuation map which is the estimate from the maximum likelihood reconstruction, uh, reconstruction process. Uh, after the scanning, the construction activity and uh, accumulation algorithm. Okay, they, 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 they get the algorithm from the scanning and then uh, to create a CT derive, a CT derive accumulation map and compare this method with I compass uh, for segment method. Okay, see, like that is how they move the technically, they get the data and then they, when they come to the uh, uh, recon process, all right, this is now it's, I'm talking about the recon process already. Uh, Talking about the attenuation just now, they move to the recon process and they compare with the available data by the algorithm. Algorithm is again, uh, I would like to emphasize here, I mean, uh, uh, artificial intelligence data is like a food. Huh? Data is like a food for artificial intelligence. Very important to have a very good data. Okay, so uh, improvement in uh, reconstruction activity uh, could also be uh, translated to do saving. Dose saving again. I would like to bring you in 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 uh, medical uh, imaging or uh, particularly uh, in a nuclear map. Uh, dose to the patient also we have to take care as well. Okay, it's not just uh, uh, to get a good quality of the image uh, to give the best service to the patient. Right? We have to take care of those savings, those that we will uh, receive by the patient. Okay, as shown by multiple group that estimated both those uh, cut image from low dose scan, example reduction in applied radioactive. Right, so we have to take into consideration, it's not just the image alone, even though we have very good artificial intelligence, but those to the patient also come to the concern. Right, so another topic of research uh, is the improvement of image quality yeah, by Hong et al. Uh, use the, the deep residual or convolutional neural networks and, and this is all the project uh, and then uh, to all the beloved students that joined uh, our webinars today I think it's very good if you can check on this project it can be part of your uh, final year project you can use this maybe you go to degree level later you can take it as your uh, research as well okay there's a lot of the uh, new model uh, available uh, for uh, what, uh, for the uh, investigation on that, all right? So uh, this one is CNN to enhance the image resolution and uh, the noise uh, property of PET uh, scanners with large pixel uh, crystal. This is a, a apply of the, uh, what, uh, 
algorithm, not algorithm again. I mean, like this one is applied on the uh, instrumentation and the equipment itself, the image quality, right? So pixel and crystal also play important part to get a very clear and very good image. We after we apply the AI uh, knowledge, AI uh, technology, that is the scanning. Okay, now let's move to the interpretation. This one interpretation is important for the uh, spatial. Okay, very important for them at the interpretation part. How artificial intelligence can be applied. Okay. So in the future, such system uh, could work directly on drone data. Okay. For example, like uh, sinogram uh, and the risk alerts during the scan time. This one, I think this one is already is already available in the market. Okay, depend on the uh, the type of the machine, the vendor, the supplier. How the technology they play in the machine. Uh, alert during the scan time, even before recon, and uh, for example, in such a scenario, uh, the technician could modify or uh, extend the plan scan protocol to accommodate the aspect of finding. This is very artificial intelligence. So, it means like the machine is already predict something should happen. So, we alert us, such as uh, what, uh, in computer tomography, we have the automatic injector device, they detect the uh, extravasation, they give a beep. That is actually a part of the artificial intelligence. So they apply to the nuclear map as well. All right. So many interpreters maintain a list of estimates that they must interpret. This is the standard uh, protocol in the hospital. Normally they apply this to practice. This. Uh, they must interpret and that they process chronologically in first in and first out order. That I think uh, standard that practice here also that. But however, some studies prove that uh, finding that require from action and therefore should be prioritized. How to do? How to know this? This one you can apply AI. Okay. Uh, uh, scientists establish a new uh, system called so called AI to prioritize uh, which patient that you need to come into the report first. Okay. It sounds good for me. I mean, like it's very promising uh, future. Okay. And then recently, uh, a deep learning, uh, the PIS uh, try system that uh, detect the free gas, free fluid, it's all uh, considered as quite advanced technology already, and then some uh, already applied have these technologies. Or fat training in abdominal CTs, multiple studies have already demonstrated the uh, feasibility study uh, of detecting clinical finding in this case. Then, uh. So this one also they apply again this technology in the nuclear plant. That's why PET CT is a hybrid machine. It's very good machine, very popular. And then such system could work directly on raw data, like scanogram and with the alert during the scan time or even the, uh, the, the reconstruction. I mean, this again, that uh, important part of the, during the interpretation uh, process. All right, so last is a reporting uh, step. You already finished, right? Finished, then you start with the uh, reporting uh, report. So uh, in healthcare, uh, AI is often initiatively associated with superhuman performance. Your superhuman uh, performance with uh, so that is important. Uh, uh, surprising that there uh, is a such a high level of research activity in the area of potential of unknown outcome. So, how to like generate automatic uh, report? Because we expect from for, uh, from the specialist super uh, human uh, performance with the help of the machine that will be good, right? So, that's the idea of the art with help of the machine. Okay, with the help of the machine, we try to like come up with a good uh, reporting, uh, talking about the sensitivity, the sensitivity of the machine, true, false, false, positive, false, negative, uh, true, negative, true, positive. Uh, that's all a very like uh, important part uh, in the uh, reporting process. So despite the high sensitivity and sensitive procedures such as PET CT, people claim this, uh, uh, the sensitivity and the specificity when it comes to the uh, uh, comparative uh, imaging, uh, a nuclear man always like good for a tumor metastasis, okay? So, but it's still not possible to detect so-called uh, micro metastasis. That's the, the, the research topic, uh, okay? The micro metastasis or the early metastasis disease. Okay. Although uh, the detection of tumor has pretty significant effect on the treatment cause. Yes, because you must have a very good diagnosis to give the better treatment. So at first, you must have a better diagnosis and they can plan for a better treatment. If wrong diagnosis, it will lead to the wrong treatment, okay? So they believe that AI can help on this. 
to establish a new technology. Okay, it's an ongoing project. So future prospective studies will show uh, whether uh, this result can also be achieved in people, but which seems promising. That is the project. It means they are using maybe, I think, rats, I believe, so to, to come up with a, 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 what, a better uh, model. All right. So another group of study achieved a promising result in detection of micrometastasis in dim nodes in neck and neck, uh, and, uh, neck cancers by combine, combining radio mix. All right. So this, again, they go to the radio mix. The radio mix, I think, consider as quite new. Uh, study of the genome, the study of the uh, human data. Okay. So analysis of CT data and three-dimensional and analysis of FDG uh, through the uh, uh, evidential uh, reason. Okay. So they, 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 they use the uh, radio mix uh, project or the, the, the knowledge of radio mix to get the data from the patient to help uh, for like uh, fast uh, reporting to accelerate the process of uh, reporting. Okay. And then uh, finally, when the complex cases or rare disease are being reported, so we know that it's important or uh, helpful to compare them with similar cases uh, from the data. Again, talking about the database. It's for the data. So uh, they look at the uh, case collection. Okay. And then through the AI based automatic image uh, annotation and the, the content page uh, retry of the image, uh, like Conducting large direct image and hot database searches, and thereby uh, finding potentially similar cases. This one also we can share, right? We can share like uh, ASEAN country, uh, Southeast Asia. Okay, that might be helpful in real uh, diagnostic situation. Then uh, increasingly, increasingly uh, for people, uh, I think that's very good to have uh, this kind of uh, collaboration. Okay, that is the reporting part. And then uh, now I move to um, what uh, media perspective of the uh, like uh, what's going to happen to uh, radio radiologists, uh, nuclear uh, medicine uh, specialists, technology, right? So media attention given like oh, for many healthcare professionals, the term and the functioning of AI remain platform. Yes, actually, people still like. Uh, Debating about well, this one is uh, can be applied. Uh, they will like uh, demolish all the uh, professions of healthcare professional. Okay, so this one is then this situation that this scenario is leading to exaggerated expectation on the one hand and unfounded fears on the other. Okay, so actually, uh, this is also part of the uh, media attention. Right, so let's look at here the artificial intelligence compared to a, a symbolic AI compared to the uh, machine learning. Okay, we move, now we move to uh, machine learning fall under the uh, deep learning uh, study. Okay. So uh, AI also has the potential to take on the variety uh, of simple of repetitive stuff in the future, in the healthcare sector. So they, they, this one come to the concern like, oh, they will replace the technology. Okay, because it's just repetitive stuff can be replaced in the uh, healthcare sector uh, in the future. So AI certainly, will not make radiology. So this is very, I mean, like, uh, important to bring this out. Uh, will not make radiologists or nuclear medicine specialists obsolete as medical experts in the possible future. Okay, no worry, because we still need a good brain. So even though we have the term intelligent itself, is actually uh, a prerequisite to have a good machine because you use the word intelligence, right? So I believe that uh, uh, radiologists or nuclear medicine specialists is still there. Okay? Is not uh, obsolete. Okay? And then, from the perspective of radiologists or nuclear specialists, this development, instead of being uh, perceived as trade, can be seen as an opportunity to play a pioneering role because it's still new, right? To bring a pioneering role within the healthcare sector and to actually shape the transformation uh, process. Okay? And uh, a little bit about the uh, limitation of uh, artificial intelligence. There is still uh, limitation. How good it is, how great it is. There is still uh, limitations. Okay. Although the, the the use of AI in healthcare certainly holds a great potential, its limitations still need to be acknowledged. We have to like acknowledge this. We cannot like oh no everything uh, perfect everything good no it's not. Eh? So another problem is that many machine learning applications will always deliver a result on an input but cannot provide a measure on the certainty of uh, the prediction. Okay. So that's one of the limitations. And then, uh, well, no problem is the interpretability of the model. That's why they come up 
always come up with a new model. The researcher we come up with a new model again, uh, project by project. We uh, we have to spend money on that also budget. Okay, so although symbolic of the art or simple machine learning model such as the decision trees or linear regression are still fully understood by the people, if we could want they apply the computer technology, yeah, okay, the software programming are still fully understood by the people, and then it become increasingly difficult with more advanced techniques. And uh, it's not impossible with many deep learning uh, models. So the question can lead to that, but the result and non-deterministic or non-deterministic non behavior. That is one of the uh, limitations of uh, AI. Okay, so uh, future outlook, mm, future outlook, the prediction. Uh, we'll say that artificial, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, does not necessarily have to be superhuman to have a benefit for medicine. Yeah, because it's a machine. Okay, it's a machine that brings a very good opportunity. However, it's obvious that AI has already better than people in some areas. That's a fact. Huh? Already better than people in some areas. We have to take care of this one also. So we have to determine what type of photographer, what type of technology we are. Okay, so you want to be replaced by the machine or we want to still there with a good way. Okay. And this, this development is a consequence of the technology process. So therefore, uh, many physicians are concerned that they will be replaced by the AI in the future. A concern that is partly as a, uh, as a by the insufficient knowledge of AI, how, how uh, AI uh, works. Okay? So that is the future. Okay, so that is my reference for uh, today. Uh, you can always check to this. Uh, feel free to go to this website. There's a lot of information. If I can link it, I it. Uh, thank you very much. That's all. I end my uh, presentation for today. So I pass back to uh, moderator, Mr. Ravi. Thank you, Mr. Ravi. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mohamed Sapwan. Very interesting, Pam. Nice to know. Um, you know, uh, your presentation about artificial intelligence, innovation in nuclear medicine. Of course, nuclear medicine is something now, um, I guess it's unknown. I mean, it is just uh, noticeable everywhere we go. Uh, we do talk about nuclear medicine. And it was very interesting to know details uh, about uh, nuclear medicine. And, uh, and of course, uh, you know, I think the trend these days is artificial intelligence. We are talking almost in every aspect of our activities. Uh, I think even in terms of food, we are talking about artificial, artificial intelligence and food. Uh, maybe a robot can make us eat, a robot can, you know, do everything. Uh, but uh, it's it was interesting to see that artificial intelligence, even though it's a boon, uh, it does have its own limitations also. And, and uh, uh, one of your slides, which mentioned very nicely that uh, the result is based on the input, but it does not, uh, it does not inform the certainty, you know, the extent of the certainty is not very there. So I think uh, Taman Taman, uh, uh, Ibu, yeah, please understand that uh, technology will only help us uh, there was one interesting question, which I, in fact, I should also thank uh, Dr. John for uh, taking the initiative to answer that question uh, that, you know, will artificial intelligence uh, replace the humans? Uh, and he, he very rightly mentioned that artificial uh, intelligence will augment the skills and uh, it will not replace the humans. So humans will remain humans and the humans uh, are something which are irreplaceable. But yes, uh, skills are something which we need to add on. Uh, which we need to keep adding the skill because technology will only make us more competitive, uh, will only make us uh, feel that we are lacking the skills. And, uh, and I think the whole process put by, uh, uh, by, uh, by Pa Mohamed uh, Sapuan talking about the medical imaging, the planning, the screening, interpretation, reporting, very insightful, Pa. Thank you so much, Pa Mohamed Sapuan. Uh, thank you so much for your insightful presentation. We really appreciate that, Pa. Thank you so much. And all to our... Uh, all to uh, our uh, participants, Papa uh, Ibu and Taman Taman. If you'll have any questions, I think Dr. John has mentioned, please ask the questions in the chat box. So please do ask questions. Uh, we have three good renowned speakers. So please use the opportunity to ask as many questions as possible. Uh, it is a learning lesson. Uh, it's a sharing session. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer. I think even though if you have a very silly question, doesn't matter. I think we are all learning here. So please take the initiative in asking more questions, right? So thank you once again. Okay, Papa Ibu. So now we move on to the third topic uh, for today. And the third topic is actually about artificial intelligence in medical and science health. Uh, and for that, uh, we have uh, Dr. John Davis Akara. Uh, he's an associate consultant uh, in Department of Ophthalmology 
of uh, Sri Ramachandra Medical College in Chennai. He ha- he was formerly uh, in uh, glaucoma consultant at Little Flower Hospital, uh, Ang- Angamali, and West End uh, West End Eye Hospital, Cochin. He completed his medical uh, school, uh, MBBS and MS Jipma, one of our renowned uh, institutions in India, and. Um, and a glaucoma fellowship from arvind i hospital in pondicherry arvind i hospital is a is a good brand papa you could just inform me it's a very good brand when it comes to eye uh, anything related to eye it's a renowned uh, brand in india uh, he has also completed the ratan uh, ratan tata advanced cataract fellowship in uh, sankara sankara netralaya chennai he has presented in state national and international conferences and also has won awards for smartphone based virtual reality perimetry smartphone op- ophthalmic photography and virtual reality in ophthalmology a uh, pretty interesting topic sir papa you tamam tamam so it's really interesting to to know more about that part uh, he has publications and innovations in ophthalmology artificial intelligence 3d printing uh, smartphone still clamp photography and so on uh he's in the he's in the technology and gadgets and does programming uh, website designing and also has made some uh, ophthalmic uh, smartphone applications uh, such as uh i grada and uh, 3d atlas of ophthalmology honestly papa ibu the the cv goes on very long but uh, rather than say rather than talking more about the cv i think we would use the time more effectively to hear from him so without further delay may i now request uh dr john davis akara to take over the screen so the screen is yours thank you thank you ravi makija sir for the introduction and thank you everyone for inviting me to this uh, talk uh thank you to the previous speakers for covering artificial intelligence so well uh i am a doctor a medical doctor and i am going to speak about artificial intelligence from the perspective of a medical doctor uh, i i think a lot of you i have an engineering background um, not a medical background so my introduction to artificial intelligence was because of my interest in technology i just got interested in a lot of technology i was uh, doing a little bit of computer programming when i was in school and even uh, while choosing my profession i would have either become an of the, a, a doctor or an engineer so it was a toss either way So now I am a doctor I am an eye doctor an ophthalmologist can you see my screen right now yes sir we can see it please okay so the topic which i am going to cover is artificial intelligence in medical and health sciences and as an ophthalmologist my introduction was with fundus imaging that is a retina imaging if you look at this this is the photograph of their human retina and a lot of a uh, lot of engineering students a lot of startup companies a lot of major in, uh, major uh, companies were using uh, artificial intelligence to try to diagnose and grade various levels of damage to the retina and that is how my introduction to artificial intelligence was later i got into knowing that all branches of medicine and so many so many other branches of engineering do have artificial intelligence as a primary uh, mover right now so i i will get into more detail let me first talk about how uh, where i am from so i am right now in chennai india so that is in south india that's over here and i did my i was born and brought up in kerala that is on the west coast and then i came to the east coast here there's another place called pondicherry for my uh, medical school and that is where i became a doctor and once i finished my medical school i did all my post graduation and all my studying in chennai so i am now right now in chennai and this is where i'm working right now this is sri ramchandra medical center and sri ramchandra medical college this is part of the sri ramchandra institute of higher education and research where we have the sri ramchandra uh, faculty of engineering and technology and a few other uh, allied health sciences also and we also have a center for sports science a very famous center for sports science we are a deemed university 
and uh, this is uh, Sri Ram Sami Udayar, our founder, and this is a big university in South India. Going to our topic, AI, artificial intelligence, it is it was always on the border between fiction and non-fiction. We always see artificial intelligence depicted in movies. Some of them are peaceful and help us. Some of them assist uh, the main character. Some of them are evil and they take over and they, they attack us. So we were not sure what it is. We thought it was just fiction. But now we realize it is not fiction. It is non-fiction. AI is there everywhere in our modern life. We have all these assistants such as Alexa, Siri, Google Now, Cortana, all these are AI. The email filter, even the email filter which redirects to spam, that is AI. The self-driving cars, they are more visible AI. Everything which we are using in modern life has AI in it. So I, I, I think this is all clear to all of you now. Artificial intelligence is the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers and machine learning is where the computers learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. And this is what humans usually do. A human baby does what we now call machine learning by itself. So babies learn by experience. They don't need to be programmed. So that is what we are trying to replicate in the machines. Deep learning and artificial neural networks, I think we have already covered. They are the methods of machine learning. Okay. And if we look where we are right now, so this is the year 2021. We are now in the fourth industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution was mechanization like water power, steam engine, James Watt, steam engine and all that. Second industrial revolution was when mass production was done. Mass production helped in uh, reducing the cost of manufacture, automobiles, machines, electricity, everything was in second industrial revolution. The third industrial revolution was with computers and automation. This All these help humans to become more efficient. Now we are in the fourth industrial revolution which includes ai virtual reality and so on and this will also help humans at every point of this when steam engine came up people were very afraid that they would lose their jobs to the steam engine they protested when mass production came on people were afraid they would lose their jobs they protested every every step of the way there is some fear about losing our jobs and the machines taking over but don't worry about that. We will always be humans. We cannot replace humans, we'll augment them. AI, it actually started long back in 1950. The Turing test was proposed by uh, Alan Turing. And it was that a, a, a software or machine should be able to trick a human into thinking that it was speaking to another human. So that is what Alan Turing suggested as a test, and that test has been by, uh, has been crossed now. So there, this is a long, long timeline. There was a point between 1966 and 1997 when much was not done, and from 1997 there was a resurgence of artificial intelligence. There was all the supercomputers. There was the robotic vacuum, robotic dogs, Siri, Watson, uh, Eugene, which passed the. Uh, Turing test, Alexa, even Microsoft chatbot, which accidentally became racist because it learned from the comments on the internet. AlphaGo, which defeated people in the game of Go and, and AlphaZero, which they are working on. So this is, this is the best timeline. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, so the, this machine learning approach has the potential to improve the accuracy and quality of medical care. That is why doctors are interested. We want to improve ourselves. And if you look at artificial intelligence in PubMed, which is the, the, the well-known well uh, medical, uh, medical uh, journal uh, um, database, it shows that there is a rapid rise in the number of articles 
the published peer reviewed articles in the well known journals about artificial intelligence the medical journals so it is there is a sudden uh, increase in the interest i am an ophthalmologist that is an eye doctor and i first came to know about ai in, uh, in ophthalmology but then there are so many other branches of medicine where artificial intelligence is very very well used so i think most of you are familiar with radiology and others dermatology is skin cardiology is the heart pathology is where you look at the diseases uh, in slides or blood oncology is cancer pediatrics is for children endocrinology is for uh, the thyroid pancreas and other endocrine organs gynecology is for women so all these branches use artificial intelligence a lot let me talk about some of them so you know that x ray machines create x rays a picture is worth a thousand words okay so the problem is if it is a few words a human can easily understand but if it's a thousand words this picture if it's worth a thousand words a human will find it difficult to go through it and understand all the intricacies so you may miss something you may not uh, find out some disease which is there or you will find it difficult to understand but for a machine a thousand words is very simple and it it's very easy to help the human understand the things and that is how artificial intelligence will augment so this is ultrasonography another imaging method then this is computed tomography ct scan cat scan this is also a, a very commonly used investigation and then there is magnetic resonance imaging which uses magnetic uh, superconducting uh, coils and magnets and all these all these images they are can be enhanced and uh, uh, help the human so if you look at this image which was acquired that is got directly from the machine this was what it was with the enhancement by a particular ai algorithm it becomes much more clearer for the human or uh, human radiologist to understand so that is that is one advantage it augments humans if there are several articles written about artificial intelligence in radiology this is uh, the one of the latest ones about detecting covid so covid 19 when it came about uh, first there was all the rt pcr tests then they realized that it affects the lungs very badly so sometimes they would just do a ct scan to find out how badly the lung was affected from the ct scans without an rt pcr report the artificial intelligence is able to give an estimate of what likelihood is that of being covid 19 just from the ct scan then there are several other articles in tuberculosis other uh, other things such as radiology residency training so it helps in teaching also in sports medicine and then in uh, dental and maxillofacial radiology other precision education and other parts of medical imaging and that is not all this is the next page now so thoracic images there is a chest and then uh, the italian society made a statement that Uh, ct and ai is not adequate but it was it will soon be adequate it will be adequate to identify covid 19 uh, about mammography and breast uh, imaging in pulmonary nodule management and neuro oncology and as we already saw in nuclear medicine so many things dermatology has so many imaging methods so everything to do with images generates a lot of data which is difficult for a human to understand so clinical photography just taking photos then there is something called dermoscopy that is you use a, a device with the lens on it to magnify and look at the uh, the uh, the nevus the moles on the skin trichoscopy is for hair nail dermoscopy for the nails optical coherence tomography is using lasers polarization fluorescence and so many things i i don't think i should uh, talk about all these things but just understand that even dermatology much more than radiology has several several imaging methods so that is a lot of image data which can be analyzed so this are some of the images this is 
a dermoscopy about to be done and uh, this is a thermal imaging this is a trichos uh, trichoscopy and these are dermoscopy pictures and ai is able to understand whether these are benign that is normal or melanoma that is cancer so just from the pictures ai can understand whether it is a dangerous mold or a or a benign mold which doesn't matter and this is difficult for a human to understand and there are even uh, smartphone apps available right now which you can use to do ai analysis of lesions on your skin so these are some of the apps visual dx first derm and some other art, uh, from some other apps uh, these are some more things about dermatology that is skin skin cancer um, and about the the file type and the method of storage dicom has some advantages over just a jpeg and dermoscopic melanoma image classification machine learning and cutaneous oncology that is skin cancers and all these things will definitely help us pathology as i said most of it is looking at uh, slides on a microscope and even after staining them it is quite difficult for a pathologist to identify the abnormal areas so ai can automatically do segmentation algorithms and help the human to understand which are the areas which are abnormal so that is that is going to be very useful there are also sometimes things which you have to count which is very boring for a human so all the boring tasks of a human can be assigned to a software algorithm it can count the number of a particular type of cells the red blood cells or different types of white blood cells find out whether patient has any sort of abnormality in their blood cardiology is about the heart and you have algorithms which can predict heart attack cardiac arrest using the uh, findings from the ecg it is difficult for a human to predict a cardiac arrest so these are things which are difficult and in during intervention if there is a block in the heart's blood vessel when you are fixing that this will correct uh, you can uh, use artificial intelligence to understand where is the block how big is the block and whether it needs to be treated it helps from uh, the ecg a simple ecg machine can be extrapolated using ai to identify more complex more complex uh, diseases cardiovascular imaging so we saw radiology same thing in the heart also there is a lot of work being done you can predict the mortality you can predict when people are likely to die so you can you can see how likely is a patient with a particular level of heart problem likely to have uh, uh, you know going to become worse and there's more about ecgs and about preventive predictive care and this is about the same thing the blockage in the heart vessels so all these things can be assisted by ai this is about obstetrics and gynecology there is a baby pregnancy delivery and uh, the woman's body so even in this there is a lot of artificial intelligence so a lot of it is radiology but lot of it is other things also i'll come to that when we come to ophthalmology in pediatrics this is for children you can diagnose diseases in children you can help in uh, fighting antimicrobial resistance so when using antibiotics if we use it improperly the bacteria can become resistant so we can use artificial intelligence to decide how to prevent that oncology is cancer and there are lots of lots of research in that we already covered nuclear medicine that comes under uh, oncology comes under that and there is a lot of precision oncology which can be done if you have ai assistance lung cancer you can identify the harm caused by immunotherapy so this is also part of oncology in addition to radiation and uh, this this has several challenges and applications as we have seen so it is not easily going to be done my specialty being ophthalmology i am going to talk a bit more about ophthalmology that is the eyes so ophthalmology there is a lot of imaging 
So there are several machines that we use to take pictures. So this is called a slit lamp. So slit lamp is a microscope which has 3D vision. So both eyes will be able to see simultaneously. And when you see something with both eyes simultaneously, you will be able to see in 3D. And you can have a slit of light and it will be magnified and you can see the eye in detail. We can take pictures using a slit lamp with a camera installed or like I was doing, you can use a smartphone attached to the eyepiece and take photos and you get very good photographs. And with those photographs, you can run AI algorithms. Retinal fundus, this is the retina of a person. And if you see these red splotches, these are bleeding. These are hemorrhages or bleeding. And this shows that there is a particular disease in the patient and AI can help to diagnose that. And retinal optical coherence tomography is a laser scan like a CT scan, but with just lasers on the retina of the eye. So it is a cross section on the retina. Fluorescein angiography, same like radiology, you actually inject a dye into the veins of the hand and it travels to the heart. And then as it goes through the blood vessels in the retina, you do angiography. So even on the eye, you can do angiography. So this is not a radio, radio angiography. This is a fluorescein angiography. And then the anterior segment means the front of the eye. This is the cornea of the eye. This is a scan, an OCT scan of the front of the eye. And this also has so many things to, uh, to see. If you have some change in the curvature of the eye, you have some uh, something called keratocornus or keratoglobus, or you have some corneal ectasia, or several other diseases of the eye can be easily diagnosed with the help of AI assistance, which is difficult for a human ophthalmologist to diagnose properly. Uh, and one more thing I want to add, the human eye is the only place in the body where blood vessels and nerves, this is actually a, the nerve from the brain which can be seen directly without cutting open anything because the cornea is transparent. We can see these blood vessels and nerves without cutting open anything. So any disease in the body, which includes, which involves the blood vessels or the nerves will have some changes here, including Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Any, any heart condition, any kidney problem, they will also have changes all over the body and only in the eye you can see them without cutting open. This is ultrasound, you know what that is. Corneal topography is to check a topography map, map of the cornea. This is to check the pressure of the eye. This is to check the power of the eye. This is to check the vision field, that is the peripheral vision of the patient. All these things generate lots of images. And these are some diseases. I'll just go through the names of the diseases. Diabetic retinopathy, very important disease. Glaucoma, another very important disease. AIDS-related macular degeneration. Retinopathy of prematurity. This is in newborn babies. Retinal vascular occlusion. That means blockage in the retinal blood vessels. Keratoconus, that is the curvature of the cornea is more. And that is all diagnosed like that. Cataract refractive that is spectacle power cataract is when the lens of the eye becomes opaque retinal detachment this is very dangerous the retina becomes detached squint is uh, where you have the eyeballs are misaligned and cancers all these things can be uh, diagnosed and helped by artificial intelligence they when we operate cataract we put a lens inside and to calculate the power of the lens also there is artificial intelligence algorithm. You can plan the squint surgery. So eyeballs are misaligned. One eye is turned inside. So to correct this, we have to precisely cut one muscle and align it. So this will help to identify how much of the muscle we have to cut and where we have to tie it. And we have to give injections in the eye for some diseases. So it will also help to say how much injection is given and how, how long we have to wait. But there is something which a human cannot do. There are some things 
which even with best training human is not able to do from the retinal image from the picture of the retina ai is able to estimate what is the age of the patient i don't know any of the ophthalmologists even the senior most eye doctors can cannot do this and it can say whether the patient is male or female no one i know can do this only ai can do this and whether patient is a smoker or non smoker whether patient is diabetic without looking at the blood sugar just looking at the retina okay whether uh, what is the actual basal uh, metabolic index so you can actually guess how much the patient's ba uh, body mass index we can see how much it is just from the retina using artificial intelligence and you can also detect cognitive impairment there is some difficulty in learning any dementia there is some abnormalities in the brain which causes memory loss alzheimer's disease risk of stroke ai can say okay this person can have a stroke there is a risk cardiovascular risk risk of heart attack and gender i mentioned and all these things these are things humans cannot do so there is a lot in ophthalmology itself and uh, as we saw radiology dermatology cardiology all sorts of uh, things more in detail diabetic retinopathy there is this is a fundus camera retinal camera there is one uh, fta that is the uh, uh, in uh, in the in the us this is the main body which gives permission whether a particular medicine or a particular device can be used they have approved artificial intelligence software as uh, to use for screening for diabetic retinopathy these are some other artificial intelligence softwares which can be used this is from uh, this is in india and singapore this is from uk this is in india and this one works offline also this runs on an iphone doesn't need a super computer to do the ai part after training it runs on the model runs on an iphone and there are some websites this is a website by a ngo non governmental organization which allows you to upload retina images and it will run an artificial intelligence algorithm for you for free and for glaucoma which is my specialty that is the eye pressures damaging the nerves of the eye there is a lot of things which artificial intelligence is already doing this is to check the pressure of the eye a particular type of contact lens this is this is to detect the damage to the nerve all these things can be done this is visual fields that is how much the side vision is damaged and so many so many uh publications and studies have been done to find out the prediction of that whether the patient is having glaucoma and if the patient has glaucoma we can predict so this is currently what the patient's side vision is we can predict that after one year after two years three years four years what will be the change and we can predict that if we control with a particular medicine how much it will be so you can tell the patient that if you use this medicine by 2 years this will be what your eyes will be like and we can predict and make treatment choices like that and retinopathy of prematurity is for newborn babies so many softwares and algorithms to help in diagnosing that this will do all segmentation of blood vessels and do further uh, diagnosis this is age related macular degeneration there is even a software app in a mobile app which can run artificial intelligence called fluid intelligence then retinal vascular occlusion that is blockage in the blood vessels you can see that and there is something called the macular edema that is sometimes when there is diabetes or other diseases there might be there might be water collecting in the retina and usually we need optical coherence tomography laser scan which is more expensive but fundus photograph retina photograms can be taken very very cheaply it is not expensive to take a retina photograph compared to an oct scan ai can take a fundus photograph and determine what will be the thickness of the retina in oct without doing an oct so that makes it cheaper okay that makes it much more effective and efficient 
so this is oct if you can do an oct these are several things which you can do on that and you can diagnose things such as pigment epithelial detachment and other several several diseases i am showing you this i am sure it must be confusing to know the names of the diseases but i am just telling you the list is endless keratoconus is the change in the cornea curvature okay and that can detect and you can detect other things such as infections and ectasia you can detect cataract you can you can even detect cataract from other investigations even ultrasound can detect cataract with the help of ai you can classify the cataract you can diagnose what will be the treatment pediatric ophthalmology is for children and from a normal photograph ai can detect whether there is something abnormal in the eyes of the patient and uh, ocular oncology is cancer looking for cancer in the eye this also can be automated refractive error is your spectacle power so there has been research which shows that from the retina photo you can predict what is the refractive error which ophthalmologists cannot do only ai can do they can predict what is the height and weight of the patient so many things so why artificial intelligence because it is cheaper faster scalable portable and it can help when there is a doctor shortage and ai does not need rest it does not need uh, rest it does not get tired it does not get bored that is why ai so the take home message is ai in medicine is not just the future it is already in the present artificial intelligence and machine learning should augment and assist medical personnel not replace them okay that is our fear doctors fear that we will be replaced so please don't do that can make healthcare accessible available and affordable to all so i hope uh, this was a very useful talk for all of you and i hope some of you are interested in doing some projects related to so many amazing modalities available thank you so much thank you sir. thank you so much dr john um, pretty interesting sir honestly speaking learned a lot that ai is not in the future but it is already in the present <laughs> um and there are so many things happening which honestly um uh, you know uh, we don't realize but it's already there and one thing i could actually connect with your presentations because uh, i was uh, you know i have a color blindness yeah i have a color blindness and they felt that actually i i was uh, you know i was glaucoma they they felt that i had something so uh, so that's the reason the, there was one particular screen where you showed the retina uh, that was something i was given the reports and uh, you know and i thought maybe that is something uh from the medical aspect but then now i understand that is uh, that is being that is being used by ai ai is helping uh, humans to augment their skill and to get that part right yes, yes. interesting thank you Absolutely. so much it, it, and it's so interesting to know that just using your retina you can identify uh, a person's age a person whether he's a male or a female and whether he's going to get a stroke or not i mean uh, i mean i i really hope they don't uh, you know artificial intelligence should not just say that you are going to be a smart boy are you going to be a smart person or are you going to be a billionaire or a millionaire <laughs> i mean i we really do not know where this artificial intelligence will take us but thank you so much uh, uh, dr john thank you so much for your uh, wonderful uh, presentation uh, also may i request all the speakers to please share your uh, powerpoints uh, if possible uh, to the committee uh, so that uh, we can share the uh, we can share the powerpoint materials Uh, to all the participants because i i guess uh, it's very interesting um, it's it's very uh, it's a great learning experience for all the participants so i think uh, if you if you don't mind uh, in sharing your powerpoint uh, materials uh, we could share that with all the participants and uh, you know probably on because of the uh, virtual uh, you know meeting what we are having uh, sometimes the network connection is not good uh due to which maybe even though they uh, they are not able to understand 100% i i guess by sharing the powerpoint it would help the uh, uh the participants to get more so i i really hope all the participants to please share your materials right thank you once again thanks a lot to the wonderful uh, uh speakers uh, we had uh, pa thanku pa uh, pa mohammad sapwan and also dr john thank you so much uh, for the wonderful presentations now we do have quite a few questions and uh, i think some of uh, some of the participants also asked uh, to be unmuted to themselves so uh, but prior to that the first question there are quite a few questions uh, so maybe let me just raise the question the question number 1 is coming from prashant 
Prashant seems to be a very active uh, participant. Quite a few questions. So thank you, Prashant. Thank you for being active uh, uh, participant. The first question, I think this goes to Pathanku. Uh, the question is, and probably even pa, pa Sapuan could support on this part. Uh, the question is, uh, the impact of the advent of artificial intelligence in uh, radiology and radiologists, what would be the impact of, uh, of the, you know, of the beginning of AI on, in radiology and to a radiologist? Uh, maybe Pathanku, could you just uh, please share your views, pa? Patanku, are you there, Pat? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Yeah, the question is uh, the impact of the advent of artificial intelligence in radiology and to the radiologist. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for the questions, uh, Prasant. And the other, there's a similar question about what is the impact of the radiologist uh, to, for the radiologist uh, with the AI. So the AI is not actually, uh, not actually going to replace radiology, but there is so many, there's so many arguments about what is your specialty? What is the specialty of a radiologist if there is an AI? Uh, but AI is actually helping you to, to help you to shorten the time when you segment the image of the medical imaging, of the, of the medical image, and then it's helped the radiologist, it enhanced radiologists to make uh, to make a diagnosis faster. And a radiologist can, can focus on uh, interact with the patients and also interact with the other teams, so, uh, with the with the method this piece multidisciplinary team. And I think that's all. Okay, sure. Thank you, Patanku. Uh, pa Sapuan, would you like to add something pa, to that? Uh, may I request the admin to please unmute Pa Sapuan? Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, I think, oh, okay, first of all, uh, thank you yeah, for the question. I think good question also, because come to concern like uh, AI will replace uh, human again, replace radiologists here. Uh, for me, what I believe is, uh, again, I stick with my ground, is that we still need a good brain, uh, knowledge, uh, together with the machine. So I try to put uh, artificial intelligence as assistance, as, as assistance to, uh, what, uh, to lead or to give a good result uh, when it comes to the diagnosis and expedite the process, speed up the uh, diagnosis as mentioned by uh, Bhattan Ku just now. So that is... Positive impact, and of course, uh, in uh, the way, uh, negative impact is people like have a doubt, they have a doubt like, oh, uh, 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 this 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 technology will have a good result, uh, a better uh, doctor. Uh, so they have to tackle that, that issue. I mean, that is my my perspective. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pasapon. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Prashant. I hope your uh, question has been answered. Uh, and Prashant goes on with another one. Question is, should AI be used in uh, radiological setup to enhance radiology or is it to be used as a screening tool? I mean, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Pasapuan, maybe your, your thoughts on this, Pasapuan? Uh, AI to be used as in radiological setup to enhance radiology or is it to be as a screening tool? Your views, Pa? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't say like uh, it for one part and one part because they have to come together. Okay. For example, like uh, radio mix. Now, in order for you to have a good data from the patient genome study, you must have a good screening. But then uh, we are talking about the medical uh, application, clinical application. You cannot rely on the 100% uh, data uh, result because the bias is still there. You must have a good analysis. You must have a good uh, 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 statistical study and only you can decide. So for me, it's either as a skin, uh, screening tool or as uh, what just now just mentioned, to help the radiologists, I think they have to come together in a package. That's my view. Okay, uh, uh, Tanku, any 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 views from your side? Uh, I don't think I have any anything to add, but it's actually very very accurate by Mrs. By Mrs. Sopon, that is, if we are, there's a bias data and there is going to uh, screening tool or radiation to enhance, I think it's going to enhance the radiologists. Okay, perfect. Right. Thank you so much, Tanku. Thanks a lot. Okay, the next question is actually from, uh, uh, it is from uh, from Laila, but I think it was already answered by Dr. John, but I think he could probably just uh, share his views again, uh, or probably even all the speakers could just share their views. Uh, can AI replace humans? Because I guess this is something, a common fear, which everyone has. Uh, you know, whenever you look at artificial intelligence, nowadays they feel that, oh, jobs are being lost 
because of artificial intelligence i mean that's a kind of a i would say it's a kind of a stereotype uh, people are going with these perceptions with these stereotypes that uh, the technology is hum- is uh, replacing humans so maybe from different perspectives in terms of nuclear medicine maybe in terms of uh, you know uh, in in terms of medical imaging and from the other aspect from dr john uh, some quick comments uh, maybe let me start with dr john uh, so uh, as i mentioned uh, to dr uh, to laila uh, it is uh, definitely um, hold on one second yeah uh, it should help you, uh, humans augment their skill okay and as i see it the role of artificial intelligence in healthcare as my perspective as a doctor it has mainly two things one is in screening screening means when you have some disease which if you find it early you can treat it better okay so for example i am a glaucoma specialist and if i know which person is having early glaucoma like the beginning of glaucoma i can find them and i can treat them and i can prevent them from going into very severe glaucoma because i cannot reverse the damage True. i can only prevent further damage so if you have ai which can easily screen lots and lots of people very efficiently without getting tired very inexpensively with minimal human interaction we can, for example i mentioned fundus camera the retinal camera retinal camera can be sitting in a mall a shopping mall or a railway station or a, any bus station and people will be just waiting there to catch the bus or maybe shopping around they can simply go and have a photo check up of the eye the ai software can say your eye looks okay or your eye needs more evaluation please go see a doctor and those patients who might not have got treated they will come to the doctor and they will be able to get the treatment early and they can prevent all the damage that that is screening then other part is helping in diagnosis so some diseases again coming to glaucoma you have different different things you have to look at to confirm whether a person has glaucoma so the eye pressure is one thing the retinal damage is one thing then there is uh, the visual fields then the oct scan for a human doctor only after looking at all of these things and then seeing whether there is any change in that only then we can get to a good final conclusion that this person has glaucoma sometimes you are still confused and you would need to repeat the test later to find out with the help of ai it can find that small subtle changes which is difficult for a human to see and it can see it very quickly and show the doctor see this area this looks suspicious and then we can look at it and we can say yes this is uh, this is definitely glaucoma or this doesn't look like glaucoma and that is assisting in the diagnosis maybe another thing is assisting in the treatment so sometimes what will happen is you will have patients coming in with some disease and then we will give some treatment and then we will have data we'll have data that this medicine is more effective for this type of person but the problem is that we don't have definite data we don't have enough time or you don't have the energy to sit and see all the data the big data the artificial intelligence algorithms can look through the big data and analyze it and quickly give an answer that this top type of patient will improve with this type of medicine whereas this type of patient will not so all these things are what ai will assist humans with it will not replace the human doctors it will assist them okay great thank you so much pa thanks a lot uh, uh pasapuan your your views on this uh pa please unmute yourself uh, okay i think yeah. enough from i think uh, enough explained by uh, it's already informed by okay right thank you thanks a lot okay now uh, the other question is actually from septi and the question is the disadvantages of ai i think that was actually mentioned by pasapuan in one of his slides uh, but still maybe some some comments uh, uh, pasapuan and maybe after that uh, uh, you know maybe pa, uh, patanku also could share his views on the disadvantages of uh, artificial intelligence yes pasapuan uh, okay uh, well talking about machine uh, because we talking about uh, machine learning and deep learning again 
data is the food for the machine. Okay. So when you talk about the data, come to the uh, bias as I mentioned, and also you need a good statistical result because people will have a trust issue here because you rely on the machine to determine or to like uh, diagnose what's the disease. All right. So I think for me, I try to uh, emphasize here is a trust issue from the uh, patient towards the radiology services. Okay. That is at least one of the things. Thank okay. You. Great. Thank you. Uh, Atanku, your views sir, on the on the limitations of or the disadvantages of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, in my in my view, the disadvantage uh, with the AI in medical imaging is uh, when the AI is actually try to diagnose take to diagnose the the pathology in the in the image and sometimes it can make a bad diagnosis and it's actually it's good uh, it's good give a very bad benefit to the patients i think we need the we need we, need, we still need humans in in this uh, in this field uh, not only ai <laughs> is enough to <laughs> Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, Dr. John, your views? I mean, since it's a very uh, common question, so maybe your views also, please. Uh, could, could you repeat the question? I guess. Uh, uh, the question is the disadvantages of artificial intelligence. Okay, so as, as, uh, as both the speakers were saying, it is dependent on the data. And as I mentioned, Microsoft released a chatbot called Day. And they thought, okay, let the chatbot learn from the internet and start responding as the internet does. But what happened was it went and got bad data and the way it responded was it became very racist because there were lots of, if you look at any comments of a YouTube video, you will know. People are not, you know, they don't put the best comments there. So this AI learned from bad data and it became bad. So there always has to be a human oversight. So we cannot always trust AI. If you actually look at, if, I don't know if anybody has read Harry Potter, they say never trust trust the device. It doesn't say device. Never trust anything uh, where you cannot see where its brains are. Okay. So the problem with most of AI is it's a black box. Most of the logic, not even the creator of the AI knows because the AI just makes connections, connections, connections and then decides on its own what is the best connection. Even if you ask the programmer of the AI, why is this doing that? They have no idea. So you cannot completely trust an AI. You can use it with the help of a human as an oversight. So you should, uh, yeah, you should be careful with AI. Okay, oh, you have to be careful about it. Okay, that's interesting. Good to know. Elon Musk also says this. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, that's really interesting. I, I, I know he's talking a lot about the Bitcoin, but now he's talking about artificial intelligence along with the Bitcoin, I believe. Okay, uh, there was a question from uh, Rakesh Roshan about artificial cornea, and I think uh, Dr. John has already replied that uh, in the chat box. Uh, so thank you, Rakesh. Thanks a lot for your question. And also thank you so much, uh, Sefti. Uh, thank you for your wonderful question. And I hope the answer was, uh, I mean, was, was being uh, uh, presented by all the three speakers. Uh, now there's a question actually from uh, Dora. Uh, Irene, and a question is, and a question is that uh, both the humans and the artificial intelligence they have their own limitations. So, what would be the what could be the limitation of artificial intelligence uh, on the human life um, in terms in in the future in the medical advancements what we are going to have? So, what what could that be? I mean, uh, I was a little bit not clear about the question, but I what I can understand is just she's trying to understand that both the humans and the artificial intelligence, they have their own limitations. So as we move forward, uh, you know, of course we'll be using more and more AI. What impact will it have uh, on the human life, uh, you know, as we move through these advancements in these artificial uh, intelligence? A pretty interesting question. I mean, a little difficult to comprehend it, but yes, I mean, a, a, a very good question, honestly. Um, yeah, Dr. John, maybe I can start with you. Yeah, so this is, this is a very interesting question. Uh, so we know that humans have limitations. We uh, so and AI was created by humans, and everything has limitations. AI also has limitations. We discussed some of the limitations of AI that it can be influenced by bad data 
and all that. But there is also a limitation when AI works as intended because AI does not, or computers do not have feelings. It does not have empathy. It cannot think emotionally like a human. So suppose, as, as we discussed, uh, if you can see from a retina image that a person is going to die in one year, if it's known by a doctor, the doctor will think emotionally and then decide to communicate to the patient depending on the patient's mental status, whether the patient should be aware of that, whether the patient's relative should be aware of that, what can be done, if nothing can be done, should they be told, or if something can be done, what should be done, all those things. AI does not think. It will say that retina image and say, okay, you're going to die in one year. And it will say it the same way, whether it's like, no, you're going to live 100 years, or you're going to die in one year, both with the same emotion. So AI cannot process human emotions. If Even if we try to do that, it will be completely artificial. So that is one major uh, limitation which I would add. Okay. Uh, and any comments for Sapuan or thank you? You would like to add something or you feel it is enough? Um, I think uh, AI, uh, what's the impact on, on the human life, uh, if the advancement of AI, it's just like at the same when um, in handphones and we have already see that we are now have smartphone uh, it we used to you know when we are doing calculation we used to do it our with it ourselves we used to calculate we used to put it on in a slip paper and try to calculate but nowadays we have a smartphone so how do we calculate we use calculator on smartphone so it's it's the same i think the impact of a human life i think it's the same when there are when there's an advancement in ai and some the, and then the and then human is using AI, human is using AI and it make, and AI is, is, is thriving and but the human is becoming less smart because it's the same with the, with the smartphone. Uh, when, when we are using our phone, we try to remember multiple numbers, multiple numbers, multiple phone numbers. But nowadays, when we are using smartphone, I don't think that I remember my phone number because I could, I could find my phone number in my, in my phone. I could, I could take, I could, I could note it, I could, I could put my phone number in my phone. And also there's so many phone, num phone number, but I don't remember them all. So it, it's the same with AI. Yeah, the advancement of technology is sometimes make human becoming less smart. That's all. No, totally, totally agree. But in fact, just with the smartphone, I understand that nowadays we start our day with the smartphone. I mean, we don't think about anyone else. We start the day with the smartphone and we end the day with the smartphone. And during the day, we are looking at the smartphone. So we don't have time for the families. We don't have time for the humans. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but Dr. John is showing me his phone. Yeah, everyone is there. And in fact, it's, and there was one interesting, uh, you know, uh, an image which I'd seen a couple of days back where a family is sitting out for dinner. Uh, and, you know, while sitting at the dinner, everyone is, you know, the kid is sitting on their iPad and, you know, the, 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 the father is sitting with the phone, uh, trying to probably send, having some business invoices. And the, and the mother is chatting with, you know, with her friends doing gossiping. So everyone's sitting on a family dinner, but still doing, you know, everyone is just connected to so-called smartphones. So that's the impact of it. Thank you so much, Patinku. Uh, Pasapon, any, uh, any views on, on you? I mean, anything you'd like to uh, uh, suggest on this part? Pasapon? Uh, are you there? I think uh, I think have explained by uh, uh, yeah sorry oh hello can you yeah. hear me yeah your your uh, your screen is gone uh, gone still that's the reason I was wondering whether you're still active yes please oh. go ahead okay uh just uh I mean to add on something uh because look at the towards ahead the future ahead uh, uh like uh, English film they try to portray like a uh, transformer interstellar matrix that's actually uh what what uh, uh they try to portray uh artificial intelligence that will affect the human life. So I think we also have to be careful. It might be like uh, uh, what become a become a reality as well. So that's, I mean, like very good about the uh, innovation of the film. They try to, to, to show that, oh, if you are not like, uh, be careful, that's going to happen to the uh, human uh, population. It's a threat as well. Mm, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, but uh, pa, 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 just to inform you, we have lost your screen, but we are not able to see you. 
uh, we we could hear you but we couldn't see you just to inform you on that part oh okay okay thank yeah sure thank you okay the next question i think the number of questions are increasing now so i think we'll need to we need to cap up the questions uh, the next question again is from prashant and the question is is there uh, uh, ai based detection for dry eyes uh maybe may i request uh, dr john to please uh, share his views on that thank you yes uh, so th there are several several tests which you look do to look at dry eyes and one of them is uh, just a simple piece of uh, uh, it's a summer strip paper which you place on the eyes and that will give you a level of how much hydration is there on the eyes so there are some other tests in which you have to look at the tears tear film on the eye and with a video you would be able to see the tear breaking up all this is difficult for a human to see so we humans when we do this test we stain the eye with one fluorescent dye and then we look at the eye with a cobalt blue light and see the fluorescence and then look for the break up of the tear film but ai can process the image the live image and so without the dye without the fluorescent light with just normal lighting ai is able to do the same thing so it becomes more efficient to detect dry eye with ai image video processor so yes there there are several methods one of them is this uh, stainless uh, normal light normal camera uh, dry eye detection Right. Okay. Thank you so much, but thanks a lot. So, um, it does have right. There are there are solutions yes, yes. for so many. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Now there was actually a, a question from uh, Ayu. In fact, Ayu wanted to speak by microphone, uh, but I could see her question on the chat box also. Uh, I will read the question. Ayu, in case you still have another question and you would like to be unmuted, please let us know. Uh, Ayu, nanti kabarin ya. Kalau mau unmute, kita bisa. Oh, that's unmute. all. I have written that all. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. The question from Ayu is that uh, uh, to probably to all the speakers, what do you think regarding the price of uh, the AI technology being used in medical or in, in the field of medicine as well as in the hospitals? The thing usually happens is that uh, the the more the modern the technology it gets more and more expensive, and it becomes not affordable to the marginal people, which is true. So I hope some comment. Uh, I mean, probably she would like to have some comment from each one of y'all, and maybe is there any other way to make this? uh technology more useful for all the people maybe how could we make it in the economies of scale where even um, a middle class families could use it i think that's what the question is from uh, ayu thank you so much ayu for a wonderful question yes may i now request uh, uh maybe uh, tanku maybe your views on that uh, my views about uh this question is uh the the more advanced the technologies and then Uh, of course, uh, the the price of it suddenly is becoming much more expensive, and actually, how it could be how could it be so affordable? Uh, it's actually it's the same when the first computer is made. When the first computer is made. Uh, the computer is the super com the first computer super computer is in the size of one room, but then it's it's very expensive and it it's also not suitable. But then how it could be affordable, because uh because There is some another invention because there's some new invention that could make the computer becoming much more cheaper to become to be to become cheaper. And of course, it's all the same. It's 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 the same with the artificial intelligence. When the artificial intelligence, when the where the device and where the algorithm is all uh, been made in or to generalize the algorithm, and then it's all in some uh, in in one algorithm, we could make this other algorithm to become be more cheaper. Um, it, it's it's in my opinion. It's it's just like you know when I'm going to talk about another smartphone. Are we going to we're going to, like talk uh, like smartphone? Uh, for example, a smartphone we're using Android. Sometimes we're using, we're using Android, we're using iOS. But what makes Android cheaper than iPhone? Than the uh, than iOS. Android is open source. So when the AI is becoming open source, it we could we could make AI this technology AI technology becoming much more cheaper. Than it used to be. I think that's my opinion in yeah. this question. Now from from a layman's perspective, Baba Ibu, Taman Taman, it's like anything which starts off is always expensive. Like an iPhone, uh, when you buy an iPhone, uh, you know the day it is released or the day it has been there in the store, 
harganya mahal-mahal ya Bapak Ibu teman-teman it's very expensive but over a period of time you know it gets a bit lower i mean that's that's from a very common perspective but but i think we are now trying to understand more from the medical point of view yes uh, maybe uh, dr john your views uh, in addition to what patanku mentioned yes so uh, as i understand it most of the cost for ai is in the development the training the making the algorithm finding the data the good data finding the right data finding the ground truth finding out which is the bad data removing it making sure you are uh, training the algorithm correctly testing it all those things so that is the initial stage once that is done there is not much of recurring cost so once you develop an algorithm most of the cost is done the recurring cost is going to be the server cost but that is going down every year like we said uh, like uh, uh, tekan ji said the price of uh, electronics is going down electronics is becoming faster and cheaper both so yeah. it is going to be easy to run an algorithm on an iphone i think the latest uh, apple computer the m1 chip it is designed to run ai it can run ai the m1 processor can run ai algorithms very nicely and all these things are becoming cheaper and cheaper so in fact the only cost which has to be uh, you know recouped is the investment to make the ai and if it is scaled to a large number of people unlike other things if it is scaled the price becomes much much cheaper because the creator can recover the cost in small small amounts small yeah okay good yeah pass up one your your views pass up one on this uh, yeah pass up one you're still on mute he's muted yeah yes uh, i think uh it's nothing for me because i think uh, well explained by dr john and patek sure right okay thank you uh, uh thank you ayu for your question and i hope your question was answered uh there were quite a few other questions about uh, cornea which i think dr john has already made a message that in the group uh, maybe i'll just speak about it so sure. what we do as an, as an eye doctor what we do right now is if a person has uh, something damaging the cornea if there is something affecting the cornea it is difficult to treat we would have to get a corneal transplant from another person after their death okay so this is after somebody dies people donate eyes and when with that donated eye we take the cornea and we give it to a person whose cornea is bad and we uh, that that is a corneal transplant and there is a lot of uh, misbeliefs about whether you know whether you should donate your cornea what will happen after death will i you know go into afterlife without eyes all those misbeliefs are there misconceptions are there. so people don't donate corneas well enough that is one reason why there is a difficulty and there is one reason why artificial corneas are required and that is still in development if people donate their corneas after death we can actually help Uh, a lot of blind people in this way. so there is one message i want to put out there if you can please donate your eyes after death okay artificial corneas it is still in very very early trial stages i don't think it will be ready for another 10 or maybe even 20 years oh, okay. until then this is a social message thank you thank you so much thanks a lot dr john thank you okay so baba ibu teman teman so we come up we come to the end of this uh, uh, webinar uh, a very interesting uh, webinar on the topic innovation of artificial intelligence in uh, medical uh, healthcare uh, and we had wonderful uh, presentations from uh, uh, pa thanku from dr john and also from pa mohammed uh, uh, sapon a round of applause to all the three speakers for the wonderful presentation a very good insight thank you so much thanks a lot uh, to all of you all for sharing your comments and again just a quick reminder to please share your powerpoint materials with the organizing committee uh, so that uh, you know they could uh, they could share that with all the participants uh, so that they could you know they could use the powerpoint as uh, as a medium to learn more uh, probably given the technological uh, disturbances or networks we have uh, which sometimes is not uh, well 
So I think uh, by sharing the materials, it would be of help to them. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot once again. Uh, one, um, one more thing. Uh, would the YouTube link be up permanently? Will it be staying on permanently? There is a um, YouTube link. Yes, there is. It's, it's being live on the YouTube. That's right. Um, maybe uh, Patanko, I, as a part of the organizing committee, will that link be there? Pa? I mean, on the... Yes, yes, there's a YouTube link. Okay. I, I, will, because... I will share you later. Okay, no, because I, I've just shared it. Uh, so the thing is, if you just share the PowerPoint without somebody explaining what the PowerPoint means, it is not going to be very effective. But True. the actual YouTube video would be much more useful. So I just shared it in the chat box. Um, okay. I, I think uh, you would email everybody who has registered for the conference as well. Sure. That would yeah. be great. Along yeah. with the PowerPoint, please share that also. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Dr. John. Thank you so much. Jari Bapai Bu, Tamantaman, please do uh, take a note of the YouTube link which has been shared. Uh, so that YouTube link will remain. Uh, so all the participants can, in case you were not able to hear properly, or maybe maybe you had some calls which came in, Munkin Kalo Sibu, Kata Munkin Ada Ganguan, Network, or whatever, Masi Bisa, uh, you know, you can still be a part of this webinar. You can have a look at the YouTube channel. Of course, along with that, the PowerPoint materials also will be shared. Jadi, uh, you can still review it. And I'm sure uh, the webinar would, uh, this webinar would be more useful and more knowledgeable uh, in your uh, in your uh, quest for learning more about artificial intelligence. Right. Okay. Before we go, uh, before I hand over to the uh, MC, just to inform all the participants that we will have a, a group photo together. So please keep yourself ready. If in case you'll want to do some makeup, uh, especially for the for the, <laughs> for the girls, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, in case you would like to do some makeup, please do it quickly. So, uh, yes. So, once again, on behalf of, uh, you know, on behalf of Stikis Aval Bros, uh, Pakan Baru, the organizing committee, um, I mean, of course, uh, in collaboration with Sri Ramachandra, with Dumai Institute of Technology and Types International, uh, we would like to thank, um, you know, all the speakers. We would also like to thank the management of Stikis Aval Bros and also the management of the uh, of the my institute of technology as well as sri ramachandra uh, you know for all your contributions uh, for making this event uh, a grand success thank you so much and also uh, to the management of uh, of stickers no, aval bro uh, especially uh, you know ibu vivi uh, who is very active and uh, thank you ibu for for choosing a wonderful topic uh, which i guess is uh, it really gives a lot of uh, good knowledge now may I now hand over the screen back to the MC. Yeah. Silakan, uh, Ibu. Okay, thank you so much for Mr. Rafi for leading the great discussion session. I do agree with Mr. Rafi. It was very interesting topics to learn in this international webinar. There are so many things that can be done for helping our patients and human life. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there is an announcement before we end this seminar. To all participants, please fill the evaluation form. The link will be given through the chat box. Sebagai pengumuman untuk Bapak Ibu peserta webinar, sebelum kita akhiri webinar ini, silakan Anda mengisi lembar evaluasi yang akan disimpan di linknya di chat box. Mohon bantuan untuk operator atau panitia. Ya, terima kasih. Sudah ada ya linknya, silakan diisi. Baik. Mari kita lanjutkan acara selanjutnya. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our webinar. In this, uh, in a moment, we are going to take pictures, as mentioned by Mr. Alfi. Please be advised to all participants to turn on your video and be prepared for the photo session. I think the makeup session already finished, <laughs> already done. There are 12 sli slides, 12 slides, one, two slides. You may keep smiling during the photo stations. Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, tibalah saatnya kita mengakhiri webinar internasional di sore hari ini. Saat lagi kita akan melakukan foto bersama. Silakan untuk Bapak Ibu semua untuk menyalakan videonya ya. Dan bersiap untuk foto bersama. Jadi silakan duduknya mungkin diperbaiki. Oh ya, ada 14 slide rupanya. Uh, there are 14 slides. 
Oke. Okay. Ya, silakan Bapak Ibu untuk tetap tersenyum ya sepanjang disebutkan 14 slide-nya karena kita nggak tahu ada di sebelah mana kita berada ya. <laughs> Oke, okay, baik. Uh, sudah siap ya untuk Bapak Panitia? Bapak Ibu Panitia mungkin ya Pak Tengku sudah oke okay ya Pak ya? Sudah bisa dimulai foto sesinya ya. Oke, okay, siap-siap tersenyum dan uh, memposisikan pada kamera. Please be prepared for the photo session. Oke, okay, I will start from slide one. Smile. Oke, okay. and then slide two. Please keep smiling. Slide two. One, two, three, smile. Oke, okay, slide number three. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, the fourth slide. One, two, three, and smile. Slide number five. One, two, three, smile. Okay, keep smiling for the slide number six. One, two, three, smile. Next slide number seven. One, two, three, smile. Slide number eight. One, two, three, smile. Okay, we, we are going to slide number nine, okay? Slide number nine. One, two, three, and smile. Mr. Tengku keep smiling, yeah? Slide number 10. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, slide number 11. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, slide number 12. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, two more. Slide number 13. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, keep smiling for slide number 14. Last slide, okay? One, two, three, and smile. Okay, I, I like the way uh, Adi Patrian, yeah, uh, uh, victory sign, yeah, okay, that's great. Okay, thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let us be all guided by all the things we have learned and heard throughout the webinar and be able to see and influence to our future. Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, kiranya kita semua boleh diinspirasi bersama dari informasi yang kita sudah pelajari sepanjang webinar ini dan kiranya bermanfaat untuk kehidupan kita bersama. Diingatkan lagi untuk Bapak Ibu yang belum mengisi form evaluasi, silakan untuk mengisinya. Please, uh, for ladies and gentlemen that hasn't uh, filled the evaluation form, please fill in the registration form that already put in the chat box. Thank you. On behalf of Stikas Awabros Pekanbaru and Stikas Awabros Batam, Indonesia, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research from India, and Dhamma Institute of Technology, Malaysia, we would like to say thank you very much to all the honorable guests the committees, the speakers, and the participants. Before we leave, there is a pantun or short verse in Indonesian culture. Kalau ada jarum yang patah, jangan disimpan di dalam peti. Kalau ada silap dan salah, harap sudi maafkan kami. Which roughly means, please forgive us for our, our shortcomings. I am Siska Natalia from Stikas Awabros Batam would like to say terima kasih, syukria, and thank you. Till we meet again and may all of you have a safe and healthy life. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Terima kasih. Sampai jumpa lagi Bapak Ibu teman-teman. Sehat selalu ya. Ya Ibu Vivi, terima kasih Bu. Take care Bu. Sehat selalu ya Bu. Thank you. Oke, okay, sama-sama Pak Rafi. Sampai yeah. ketemu di India Pak Rafi. Oh yes, sure. <laughs> setelah di Corona mudah-mudahan bisa cepat ya sembuh ya Bu. Will go to Chennai. 
Terima, <laughs> terima kasih juga ya daripada saya. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Iya iya iya. Kita jumpa lagi. So, ke Malaysia belum bisa kita masuk belum. ya. Orang belum. Indonesia belum bisa masuk ke Malaysia. Belum lagi. Terima kasih nanti datang. <laughs> Harus karantina 14 hari Pak Sofwan Sangat <laughs> lama sekali <laughs> Oh ya Oke okay. okay, Pak Raffi Terima kasih yeah. Pak Raffi Terima kasih ya Bu Thank you so much John okay. Thank you so much Thank you so much Ya Dr. John uh, thank, thank you Ya Pak Sofwan Thank you so much Thank you Oke Thank you everyone Sehat semua okay. Thank you Pak Sofwan Thank you Pak Tengku Thank you Bye 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 Ya yeah. Ya yeah. yeah. Ijen permit ya Bapak Ibu Thank you Ya yeah. Bye Pak Terima kasih Mbak Wiwi, terima kasih Prof Fadil, terima kasih Bapak Ibu Panitia semua, saya mohon palmit. Ini zoomnya udah selesai apa bagaimana sih? Oh, udah selesai. Udah lah.